Bill of Vasquez. Commissioner Caldwell. Here. Commissioner Harriet. Present. Commissioner McCool. Here. Commissioner Shimkus. Here. Vice Mayor Jody Lee. Here. Mayor Bela. Here. This time, uh, Commissioner of District 4, uh, Ms. Commissioner McCool is gonna be presenting the invocation and pledge to the flag. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, I appreciate that. And as I am under the weather severely, I would ask if, um, Mr. Mayor, you would take the reins here um, for the moment of silence and the pledge for me. Concludes a moment of silence. The United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This time we're gonna do approval of minutes for the regular commission meeting of February 19, 2024 and special commission meeting of February 26, 2024 as presented. Moved. So moved by Vice Mayor Jody Lee. Second by Commissioner Stephen Colwell. Commissioner Colwell. Yes. Commissioner Harriet. Yes. Commissioner McCool. Yes. Commissioner Shimkus? Yes. Vice Mayor Jody Lee? Yes. Mayor Villa? Yes. 6 0. Motion passes 6 0. At this time, we're going to go ahead, and there was a special request by the city manager to have presentation uh, of Section C be moved ahead of the rest. If there's no objection, we're going to go ahead and uh, have the presentation of the VSO and firefighter certificates. Sure. Okay, how's everybody doing tonight? We want to welcome our Sheriff's Department, our Volusia County Sheriff's Department. Thank you. They're here in force tonight, which is a great thing to see. Also, we'd like to recognize our Deltona Fire Department. I'm going to read something real briefly here. Um, back in December the 20th, 2023, crews from Engine 63, Medic 63, and Tower 65 uh, faced an unprecedented challenge, tasked with preventing a fire from spreading to the second story of a home. They encountered a situation unlike any before. Amidst our, the fire, our firefighting efforts, these crews faced an active threat from a shooter inside the home who was uh, deliberately 
setting fires to destroy his property while in an active standoff with the sheriff's deputies. And I got to say, the sheriff's deputies, I watched that video and they were very, very, very brave. They would, uh, one officer got shot with the shield. Um, our firefighters were there behind the shields trying to protect the home and the surrounding homes next to it. They all did a fantastic job. Uh, I went out on the scene, but I could not get close enough to see it. But once I saw the video, the hair st stood up on the back of my neck. It was really amazing, the job that they did. Um, despite the intermittent danger, these brave crews remain resolute in containing the fire. Once the individual was outside the structure, crews treated him like they would any other patient and worked diligently, diligently to provide advanced life-saving measures. The outcome of this call could have been very different if it wasn't for the support and bravery of the Volusia County Sheriff's Department. These deputies protected our firefighters from their armored vehicle, uh, their ballistic shields, and themselves. Uh, the city of Deltona ex is extremely proud of our firefighters and the Volusia County Sheriff's Office deputies for their teamwork on that day allowed everyone to go home safe. Thank you very much. Please. Thank you. Now I'm going to turn it over to the mayor. They're going to call out the names. They're going to give out certificates for these brave officers, uh, both the fire department and the sheriff's department. Thank you very much. Deputy A.J. Davis, Sergeant Andrew Bain, Sergeant Anthony Zimmer, Deputy Antonio Fernandez, Captain Ben Israel, Deputy Boris Rodriguez, Deputy Brandy Bergeron, Detective Brandon Watson, Deputy Britt Whitson, Deputy Brian Walcott, Deputy Daniel Barizabal, Barriozabal, Sergeant David Winhoven, Deputy Devin DeLucia, Deputy Eban Prado, Eric, I mean, I'm sorry, Captain Eric Powers, Deputy Ethan Thomas, Deputy Gage Bryant, Deputy Gavin Metz, Sergeant Jeremy Patterson, Sergeant Jimmy Stone, Sergeant Joel Hernandez, Deputy Jonathan Freeborough, Detective Joseph Borbley, Sergeant Justin Stewart, Assistant Chief Kyle McDaniel, Deputy Lindsey Campbell, Deputy Lon Lonnie Feaster, Deputy Nicole Richardson, <laughs> Lieutenant Omar Bello, Deputy Pierce Acosta, Deputy Raymond Gomez, Lieutenant Ryan Mills, Deputy Stefan Ortiz, Deputy Steven Eisen, Deputy Stuart Girdwood, Deputy Timothy Gibbons, Deputy Zachary Strang, Wait, this is a separate, right? Okay. I don't see any of them. Lieutenant John Court, Deputy Brandon Bivone, there you go. Deputy Craig Dexter, Deputy Greg Ingram, Deputy Pedro Palmier, Tactical Vehicle Operator Sergeant Dennis Terrero, Deputy Donald Clem, Deputy Doug Meyer, Lieutenant Anthony Sh Shank, Sergeant Brody Hughes, Danielle Stone and crew, Sergeant Tony Tagle, Detective Anthony Boda. 
I want to thank the city of Daytona, Deltona, for getting, uh, acknowledging, I was, and I'll tell you why I said Daytona in a minute. I want to thank everybody for honoring all these brave men and brave women. folks whose names were called weren't here tonight because they are in Daytona working the bike week detail. Mm -hmm. There's two people I do want to point out in particular. Uh, one gentleman who was shot in the face during this incident, Deputy Ethan Thomas. He just came to work for us in August, right? We, we stole him from New York State to come down here to work for us. And Sergeant Jimmy Stone, who had the shield, took the round of the shield. The bullet fragmented and caught him in his lower face and jaw area. And, and Jimmy's been here a long time. He's also a uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, and combat vet. So one thing I told the chief when I was out there, we have vests, we have shields, we have armored vehicles. Those folks back there had nothing but bunker gear and a hose. So keep that in mind. So thank you all very much. Thank you, thank you Sheriff Jim Wood. And now we're going to recognize the fire department, um, their bravery also. Okay. <laughs> Lieutenant Michael Drew, Lieutenant Katie Hart, Lieutenant Melanie Nipper, Engineer Jacob Jeffries, Engineer Alfredo Merced, Fire to Fire Terrell Lundy, Firefighter Mark Rothwell, Firefighter Jacob Ed Evans, Firefighter Tanya, Tanya Polk, Firefighter Bobby Dodden, Firefighter Tony Casquillo, Chief, you want to come up for a second? Say a couple of words. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hi. Um, yeah, I'd just like to say that, uh, first of all, I can't tell you how proud I am of these men and women here and also of the Sheriff's Department that, that was out there that day. It was it was definitely an incident that was one for the books for us. Uh, generally, we don't come on scene until uh, the scene is secure for stuff like that, but um, we did have an active fire going on and we had a person that was trapped, well, wasn't trapped in the house, but was in the house. And, you know, uh, we have a saying that we risk a lot to save a life and there was a life in that building and you know we did what we thought we needed to do for that that being said I can't say enough about the uh, not only my women, men and women that were out there but also the professionalism from the sheriff's department it was just amazing uh, first of all they kept us in the loop with everything that was going on um, our men and women that were up on the front lines first of all um, they had their vehicles in front of us they had their shields in front of us and they even and had themselves in front of us uh, to try to protect us. So I can't say enough about that. Not only on top of that, you know, the, the tactics they had, we knew exactly what we were going to do if something happened. If shots were fired at us, we knew exactly where to go and exactly what to do. And that just uh, is a tremendous tribute to the professionalism of the Sheriff's Department and our organization as well. So again, I can't say enough about the men and women of my department. I <laughs> I'm extremely proud of them, so thank you. One thing the chief forgot to mention, that he was out there also. I saw the pictures, I'm telling you. He wasn't recognized, but he should be. He, he leads a great crew, a very brave crew, and I appreciate it, Chief. Even though your name didn't get called, I'm calling you out now, buddy. Thank you. So we're going to do a very quick picture with the commissioners and law enforcement and firefighters together. So if we can all get it here in the middle. Ladies, gentlemen. Uh, 
All right, this time we're gonna go ahead and uh, we have Captain Eric Powers with the Volusia County Sheriff's Office with a presentation. Captain Powers, your mic is probably off. There we go. Thank you. So this is gonna be the end of the year review for 2023. We have it a little bit later, but we're getting to it. So first, the Volusia Sheriff's Office uh, deputies continue to perform their duties based in the Volusia County uh, Sheriff's Office. Vision of accountability based policing, community engagement, technology, servant leadership, and diversity. This is proven through the part one crime statistics, clearance, clearance rate statistics, and community engagement events. <clears throat> so part one crimes and group A crimes. So recently, uh, UCR has gone to the wayside and we've, uh, we've moved to uh, NIBRS. It's just a different way of reporting how we have to report uh, back to the FBI and I'll get a little bit further into that uh, in the presentation. So part of these crimes are uh, criminal homicide, sexual batteries, robbery, aggravated assault, burglary, larceny, auto theft, arson. So there are some more um, that get grouped into category or a group A crimes uh, that are not on this list. So how we track everything and how we approach this is through CompStat. CompStat is a performance management system that is used to reduce crime and achieve other department goals. CompStat emphasizes information sharing, responsibility, accountability, and approving effectiveness. <clears throat> so CompStat involves weekly crime control strat strategy meetings as a means to increase the flow of information between all members of the agency. Other criminal justice agencies and the community with particular emphasis on the flow of crime and quality of law enforcement information. Uh, CompStat components, uh, these include timely and accurate intelligence, <clears throat> rapid deployment of resources. So when, when a crime happens, we're not trying to be completely reactive. We want to jump on it as soon as we can. The faster we can get to it, the faster we can deploy our resources, whether they're in the, the city resources or we, as, or we ask for assistance through the, the county. Uh, because even though you contract with us, you pay a certain amount of money for a certain amount of deputies. If we have an issue, we're bringing everything the sheriff's office has, our county resources, everything to solve the issues that you have in this city. Uh, effective tactics. 
we're constantly trying to be innovative in the way that we come across these crimes and how we choose to uh, solve them and relentless follow-up. Uh, we have deputies that are out here that just go beyond the scope. Uh, recently we had a theft and it seemed pretty small, but for the uh, victim it wasn't. And this deputy went through, checked ring video cameras, LPRs, everything. And unfortunately, she wasn't able to solve it. But when they went back to the victim and said, hey, this is everything we've done to try to solve your crime, they were extremely happy. Because uh, when you talk to so, you know, the citizens at large, and you say, we did all this for a bicycle theft. And why, why did you do all that for just a bicycle theft? Well, to them, it may be something else. Maybe they can't afford a bike. Um, so this is why we do as much follow-up and, and push it as far as we can with all these crimes, whether they're to a homicide to just a, a petty theft. <sighs> CompStat principle. The CompStat control module has continued to be a proven effective in Deltona with part, run, part one crimes clearance rate of 60% in 2022 and 69% in 2023. The clearance rate for all Group A crimes for 23 is 79.34%. As comparison, the national Part 1 crime clearance rate is only 31%. So if you come to this city and you commit a crime, you're pretty certain we're going to throw you in jail for it. So this is uh, the old school way that we were reporting through UCR. So how UCR and NIBRS runs is, the state of Florida has crimes, and we have to define those crimes a certain way. The problem with that is Georgia, Washington State, California have similar crimes, but their definition of those crimes are not quite the same as what ours are. So a burglary in the state of Florida may not be the same elements of the crime as a burglary in New York State. So the FBI says, well, we need to figure out a way that we can have a level playing field and everybody will report the same way. So that's where UCR comes into effect. So some of these that we'll have, which may be a robbery, might not be a robbery of what you think, but it meets the UCR and NIBRS idea of what a robbery is. So we have to classify it as a robbery or a burglary or a theft when you may think it's per state statute, it's actually a burglary, but per UCR and IBRS is actually a theft. So that's just a reporting thing, nothing to do with state statute. Uh, and this changed in June of last year. So from January till May 31st, we were still under the old system. And then that next month is when the new system started. So for 23, for total burglaries, we had a 76% clearance rate. Uh, for total larcenies, we're at 46% clearance rate. Robberies, were at a 97% clearance rate. Total aggravated assaults and batteries, were at 85%. Total sexual batteries, were at 93%. And part one crimes total, we were at a 69%. So this is the new system and how we have to report. So under the old system, um, if you had, if somebody was charged in the same incident with five different crimes, whether it be robbery and theft and arson or whatever, they would take the highest of the crimes and that's the only one that got reported. Under the new system, all five of those crimes will now be reported. So some of them will go up, um, for the stat wise, but it's it's just how we have to report it now. So there's no no difference really is still being solved. Um, so for group A crimes, these are person crimes, <clears throat> our total clearance rate was at 88.1% for person crimes. For property crimes, we were at 50.11% for property crimes. So for our total of group A crimes, which in parts uh, person crimes, property crimes, and crimes against society, we were at a 79.34% for clearance rate. And that's an outstanding when you con uh, consider the national average of what everybody else is clearing them at. Uh, another issue that always comes apart is the nar uh, narcotics in the city of Deltona. We do have a unit that takes care of that. So some of the stuff that they had dealt with this year, uh, they made 80 felony arrests, 21 misdemeanor arrests. They seized $91,942 and two vehicles. Total cocaine seized was 2,340 grams, which comes out to just over about five, uh, five pounds. Total cocaine or crack cocaine was 101, 
Cannabis was nine pounds, 400 grams. Several plants, 80 or 691 grams of fentanyl was seized. And that's just uh, over a pound, maybe about a pound and a half. Heroin seized about 99 grams. Uh, narcotic pills, 793 total narcotics. Uh, the value, the street value of the narcotics that we see is $273,000 off the streets of Deltona. That's just the city of Deltona. That is not the entire county. Uh, Countywide overdoses um, have gone up. However, Deltona overdoses have gone down. We had five less deaths, or five less deaths, deaths, excuse me, last year than the year prior. Um, Another big thing when I came and took, uh, took command of District 4 uh, was traffic enforcement. It was a big issue with, uh, so we had some THIs that, from the earlier part of 2023. 20, uh, so it was a very, very big thing that I wanted to tackle uh, that year and continue to tackle. So total, Deltona Traffic Enforcement conducted 10,210 traffic stops. They wrote 7,410 citations with 4,082 warnings. Of those, 1,638 were criminal citations. Um, we employed 95 step assignments, and what that is is a uh, selected traffic enforcement program. So if one of your, uh, one of the citizens in Deltona say, hey, people keep running a stop sign or they're speeding down Howland at this area at this time, we'll, we'll put one of these up, the traffic unit will take it, and we will track how much time we're out there, how many citations, everything that we do in that time frame to say either A, it is a legitimate one where we need to sit out there longer or there, there's just nothing happening there, and we move on to the next. Next. Uh, traffic complaints received another 61. And traffic operations, we did five last year with another one coming. We're going to have another one here soon. Um, and the one that we did about this time last year, we brought in county motors and other uh, deputies from within the county, with, would it be crime suppression and a few from range and boats that came in to assist Deltona's traffic deputies. And in a three-day time span, I believe we wrote over 500 citations in the city. And a lot of those were the traffic complaints that citizens were ha having issues with in their neighborhoods. LPR success. Throughout the city, we have several LPRs. Uh, they're uh, license plate readers that are stationary. And they help us catch uh, stolen vehicles, wanted subjects, and so on. So just a, a case that we had done, there were nine cases, nine of our cases related uh, to a successful LPR technology hit. In May of 2023, a string of auto thefts, vehicle burglaries, and dispensary burglaries began to plague Central Florida to include the city of Deltona. During these incidents, suspects used mask, gloves, and other clothing items to conceal their identity. However, with the use of LPRs, vehicle tags were identified and suspects were able to, be, to also be identified. Arrests were made and all of these were cleared. The suspects were gang members out of Orange County and with our help, other agencies were also able to charge these suspects for the crimes they committed in their areas of responsibilities. And they had double digits and felony arrests throughout Central Florida. Another thing that we like to do is, is being involved in the community. It's, it's sad to say, but most when people have interactions with cops, it's not always the best thing. So we do like to try to see the lighter side of it. So Deputy surprised Chris, a local 7-Eleven employee, with a birthday card and a gift. This was to thank him for all of his hard work and being a friendly face on many late nights. He, just, just a kid that was working at a gas station that had very positive interaction with us and our deputies decided on behalf they just wanted to do something nice for them. So for the future that we have planned for this current fiscal year, we added one lieutenant and one sergeant and that sergeant is now oversees the traffic unit and the lieutenant oversees motors, traffic and the crime suppression team. For 2025 budget year, we look to increase road patrol by four deputies. Now with this, uh, in the city, I believe everybody knows that there's a lot of growth happening in the cities with new construction and new development, which brings on more calls for service, more traffic complaints, more traffic issues. So with those four deputies, 
uh, we are going to reline city zones, and that is our call, our, um, sheriff's office zones, not your zones, obviously. Um, and we're going to add an additional deputy for an additional shift on each shift in the city to better respond in a timely manner to all, because we do not want to get behind the eight ball and start having a very extensive time that we uh, answer the calls of service. Oop. Thank you. If there's any questions. Any questions from the commissioners? No. Captain Powers, thank you. Thank you for everything you guys do out there. Hopefully you guys stay safe. Please. Thank you. This time we're going to go ahead and do the presentation for the VSO Citizen Award. Sheriff Chitwood. And do you want the commission down there as well? Yeah, please. After that, we'll do the superstars. <laughs> Uh, good evening again. I want to thank Captain Powers uh, for all the time you put in on that presentation. I can tell you from all of us in the Sheriff's Office, it is an honor and a privilege to serve this community. And I think, yeah, absolutely. Sometimes we tend to tear one another down and not really pay attention to the great people that we have here. And tonight we want to honor a few of them. If you remember back on February 2nd, outside of the Circle K, we had the horrible incident where the guy beat, almost beat his, his dog to death with, the, with a chain. Yeah. And as opposed to people driving by and saying, that's horrendous, or I'll call 911 and keep driving, we had a bunch of individuals that stopped, confronted him, and were able to physically rescue that dog and make sure that we were able to get it the attention that it needed. So, So I want to honor, if we could bring them up and honor them. I know some of you may hear, some of you may not be here. And if I screw up your name, please don't be afraid to poke me in the back and say that's not how you say my name. Raymond Prush. Yeah, I'm going to get you up to the mayor. Oh my God, thank, thank you. you so thank much, you, sir. Very it's much. an honor to meet you. Thank you. Uh, Edward Coate and his son, Wyatt. Okay, Lit Litzinger. Litzinger. Yeah, I, I butchered it now. How is it? Thank you. Thank you very much. Mia Crawford. Don, you monk. I, I know, right? I, how bad did I put you? I was close, right? Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, okay. Michael Steiniger. Thank you all so much. Every last one. 
Everybody, you are a hero. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. We just we had to stand up and give that innocent dog a voice that day. We are fine. Thank you. All right. Vice Mayor Jody Lee. So this time we're going to go ahead and do the Super uh, Students Award. So if we can please read the names. Eleanor Smith, Discovery Elementary, fifth grade. Forest Lake Elementary, fourth grade. Okay, I apologize. Ty Ha, Sunrise Elementary, fourth grade. Aaliyah Marrero Rosado, second grade, Timbergrass Elementary. <laughs> Desiree Spence, Volusia Pines Elementary, fifth grade. Olivia Bebout, Daytona Middle, eighth grade. <laughs> Eli Shoemaker, Galaxy Middle, seventh grade. Taking too long to take the picture. <laughs> Alianis Colon, Colon, Heritage Middle, seventh grade. <laughs> Adewala Orogande, twelfth grade, Deltona High. Ariana Braley, Pine Ridge, 11th grade. <laughs> That's it. We got one more thing to do. So at this time I'd like to bring up uh, three very special people, not that everybody else here isn't special, but if I can have Ms. Pat Northy please come up, Ms. Zanetta Denizak, and Terry Ellis. And in honor of Women's History Month, we're going to read a proclamation that reads, whereas every year March is designated as Women's History Month by presidential proclamation to honor women's contribution to history, culture, and society, and has been observed annually in the month of March in the United States since 1987. 
And whereas Women's History Month is dedicated month to, is a dedicated month to reflect on often overlooked contributions of women to the United States history. And whereas Women's History Month grew out of week-long celebrations of women's contributions to culture, history, society, organized by the school district of Sonoma, California in 1978. And whereas the movement spread across the country as the communities initiated their own women's history celebrations. And whereas in February 1980, President Jimmy Carter issued the first presidential proclamation declaring the week of March 8th as National Women's History Week. And whereas in March 1987, Congress passed Public Law 100-9 designating March as Women's History Month. Now therefore, we the Mayor, City Commission of Deltona, Florida, do hereby proclaim the month of March 2024 as Women's History Month. In the city of Deltona, we urge all residents to join us in the special observation observance celebrating contributions that the women have given to society throughout history. 2024 Community Contribution Recipient, Pat Northy. Thank you. Thank you. 2024 Community Contribution Recipient, Zenaida Denizak. and 2024 Community Contribution Recipient, Terry Ellis. You ladies can please come up here and we can take a picture with the commissioner. We have one child that wants to take a picture with the group before we go to the next proclamation. All right, Commissioner Shimkus, this proclamation. What's your name on? Read, read up. Nope. Good evening, I will be reading, reading the proclamation here for Government Finance Professionals Week. Whereas Government Finance Professionals Week recognizes government finance professionals throughout the state of Florida and the services they provide, and whereas the city of Daltona recognizes that effective financial management is essential for maintaining the vital services it provides for its residents, and whereas the city of Daltona is committed to responsible resource management and transparent financial reporting, and whereas the city of Daltona's finance, <coughs> excuse me, finance professionals' diligence and proficiencies are evidenced by a solid track record of successful audits and recognized excellence in financial reporting and budget presentation, and whereas the city wishes to acknowledge the efforts and dedication of its finance staff, now therefore we, the mayor, the city commission of Daytona, Florida, do hereby proclaim March 18th through 22nd as 2024 as Government Finance Professionals Week. Mary? Presented to Mary Leeson and her department. Thank you so much. At this time, we're going to go ahead and enter into public forum. Terry Brock? Brock? Brock.
Good evening. I'm Terry Brock. I live over in Twin Lakes subdivision. I think I've heard there's a problem with the people on the city not wanting to get rid of your stormwater out of my backyard. Public money and private money, it's the same. I pay my taxes every year. I've lived there 14 years. In the last three years, my backyard's flooded. Thank God my house hasn't gotten it yet, but it's only three and a half feet from it. And I think this year, since we had no dry season, I'm gonna have a big problem. When I do, you will. Because I will file a lawsuit, and I'm doing it very soon. So y'all need to get your act together, quit with your bickering about your politics, and get this solved. Because this is the development that you're doing. You are not looking at the bigger picture. You're looking at little spots. It's the whole city. And I'm going to ask you for the last time, quit bickering with each other. Yeah, my yard got pumped a couple of months ago after water sat there for four months. Do you know how much encephalitis and everything else that's around there? you know how much the mosquitoes carry around there? It's a health issue. Y'all, you, you, you put this problem here, y'all need to fix it. That's my tax money too. Every one of you. I pay taxes just like y'all been. I've been there in that community for 14 years. I was born and raised in Central Florida. And I have never seen the disgusting that I'm seeing from board members. And I'm gonna let somebody else have my other two minutes. Y'all having a good night. Courtney Cross Burgos. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Courtney Cross Burgos. I also live in Twin Lakes. Can't hear you. you can't hear me? Is it? On? I guess it's on, right? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Just speak a little louder, that's all. Okay, I'll try. <laughs> um, I also live in Twin Lakes, and um, Albert, in the last meeting, brought up that all this was because Adam and the mayor were friends, and that Adam was no longer our, our president. You called him the former president. Adam Vasquez is still the president of Twin Lakes, and he is friends with, with the mayor. But this all started when Heidi was mayor, so it has nothing to do with their friendship. Heidi and Dana got somebody out to Mr. Brock's property during Ian. Not this mayor. Not our representative, Maritza, because God forbid she does anything for us. But Dana helped us, and Heidi helped us during that. And I, like Terry said, I pay taxes. I pay over $4,000 in taxes. 1400 of it, almost, goes to the city of Deltona. We take care of our roads, our sidewalks, our street signs, the common areas. We take care of all that because we're a private gated community. I get that. But this stormwater is because previous commissioners, the city has let all this development go, especially Lake Gleason Reserve. All that water is coming into our community. It's not our fault. It's not our problem. And, and Jody Lee, you, know, you wanted to know how much it costs and whatever. Okay, well give me back my tax money that I pay for stormwater since you don't want to help us out because you have something against the mayor, he has something against you. You know, I think all of you are pretty good people, and I think all of you have basically care about our city. But I wish that you guys would stop infighting, and you come after our community now. You don't want to do anything for us because Adam is friends with, with the mayor. But it has nothing to do with that. We are citizens, residents of Deltona. We pay our taxes. We follow the laws. We do what we have to do. And we come up respectfully to you guys. And, you know, it, it's not something we caused. The development has been there since the early 90s, if I'm not mistaken. I've been there nine years. I personally don't have a problem. My pro property is up a little higher. But, you know, I'm not the only one that lives there. And to hear us being treated like redheaded stepchildren because of whatever problems you have with each other and because we live in a gated community, 
okay, don't pay for our roads and other things, like I said, but you need to help us out with this stormwater. Yeah, it's, you know, county property and because the city uh, overbuilding. And uh, I, like I said, I really do think you all have the, the benefit of, um, I mean, the, the welfare of Deltona by heart, but you guys have to start stop fighting with each other and stop being Republican or Democrat and just be Deltonians and take care of us. Anyway, thank you very much. Hope you have a nice evening. Hello there, my name is Corey Julian. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, I own a few properties in Deltona, Lake Helen, Osteen. And um, the first complaint, I guess, is my concern about this rain tree development in which they want to re-subdivide for another 300 houses on 70-something acres. 69 acres, thank you. Um, as I own 80 acres at the edge of Lake Helen and Deltona proper at Beckwith that floods monthly as the rains come through, and I agree with all of them, there is no infrastructure in this city for stormwater. There wasn't one, it wasn't planned in the beginning, and yet you keep issuing permits and keep building without any structure or plan to stop this. Um, at some point, and again, I'm, I'm the victim of it in multiple directions, my house in Osteen on the river went to the edge of the water, my cabin went underwater, and I agree with some other people that have suggested that as Deltona drains off its water and blocks the waters and they build these 415 bridge to try to bring in more people, you keep affecting the rest of us. So I, I moved to the county, I moved out and away from everything because I wanted to be left alone. And yet this urban spread that keeps coming at us with no plan, I, I find it very bothersome. Uh, that's it, that's all I have. I sure hope you guys work harder at this. Charlene Smith. Good evening, Charlene Smith, District 2. Uh, Mayor, you've had quite a couple weeks. You're internet famous now and not in a good way. I know you might want to think this is a political attack, but it's not. This is something that I take very personally and something that I've passionately stood up for for many, many years long before I've been politically active. This is all me. And I have no doubt Scientology is a dangerous cult, which I have sent you extensive proof of. If you don't believe me, just read the comments on your social media posts. You're flooded with comments from people that were in Scientology. In fact, one of the comments was from me, and I was critical of Scientology. And then very quickly, there were comments from people supporting you in Scientology. But none of them were from Deltona or even the state of Florida. Some of them were just sock accounts. This is a textbook OSA tactic. That's the Office of Special Affairs, Scientology Secret Service. This is what they do. They're probably watching right now, so. Hey, Osa. But there are even more comments from people talking about their personal experiences. This isn't a fringe movement or cancel culture. This is mainstream, common knowledge with irrefutable proof. This one comment stood out to me. The cult of Scientology stole my childhood, destroyed my family 40 years ago. Please do whatever you can to end the abuse that continues to this day. Scientology is an organized crime masquerading as a religion. And there's thousands of more stories like that everywhere. It can be found very easily. I, I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt that you really didn't know what you were, you know, agreeing to, that you were just looking for something new to stand out about. But now you've stepped into a hornet's nest. This permanently ties Deltona and I, all you and all of us to a cult. Because whether you rescinded that or not, they're gonna use that, and that's part of their propaganda file now. And they're gonna watch you even more because you've rescinded it. And I say this to help everyone understand how detrimental this is. If you doubt it, just look at Clearwater. They've had Scientology there for years, and they've serendipitously blocked any growth going on in that city. The city council can't get anything done. And if any journalists cover it and talk about it, they get harassed and stalked. 
In fact, elected officials get harassed and stalked. As Councilman Mark Bunker, he'll tell you. Uh, I've sent you plenty of information to debunk that proclamation that it was all blatantly false. So I'm asking the commission going forward to create a new policy that requires commission consensus on all new proclamations and that every year previous ones re are reviewed before they're brought forward again for the current year. Um, and I just want to end with if anybody watching this is in Scientology and you want to get out, you can contact the Aftermath Foundation. They will help you. And where's Shelly? Brandy White, please. Brandy White, Deltona. Uh, f just three things. That survey that was being sent out, I got a couple questions on that. Uh, first of all is how is it being shared? Uh, I was actually sitting with my tax professional today who has multiple rentals here in Deltona and had no idea about this survey. Somebody who probably should be taking the survey. Uh, secondly, who created the survey? And how much did we spend? What were the data sets that are pulled from this survey supposed to go towards? I understood it was supposed to be about the budget, but the data uh, is going to be very skewed because of the questions that were asked. Uh, many of them didn't give you an option to choose more than one, yet there's more than one applicable answer. Like when do you drive the most? Well, most people who drive out come home, so there would be day and night but there's not an option for more than one. So you're gonna have some skewed data with some of these questions, along with you know things like asking about sewer, but no option for those who've never used sewer to opt out of answering the question. It was a required question. So the data's already skewed. I, I wouldn't even use the data. Uh, second, there's been a lot of discussion for many months about the smart meters being installed for the water. Um, do we have a quality control person that's supposed to come and check on this work? I know it's outsourced. Uh, I know the city of Deltona is not the one doing the actual change out. And I ask that because as much as I poke fun at it, I'm not the only one having the issue with the results of these being changed where your box that is supposed to be in the ground protecting your meter is sitting on top of the ground doing nothing. Um, mine personally, if I don't put a block on the lid and we get a good storm, that lid's gonna launch. So I put blocks on it. But I'm just curious, since I'm not the only one, if, if why, if there isn't, why wasn't there a quality control clause when we contracted this out? Is that a contracting issue? Uh, my lastly would be about the Teresa Basin study. Uh, I know we've burnt all our chances at moratoriums because we failed to do anything with them. Uh, but I would highly suggest a conversation at least to discuss not approving any rezones and especially watch the building in the Teresa Basin itself. Because how much are we paying for this study that is studying it as it's currently zoned and processed? Are we going to consistently feed them new data? Oh, just approve this one. Oh, just rezone that one. Have them continue to start over. We're already two years out on an answer. So these are things that need to be discussed and talked about uh, thoroughly. Thank you. Kathy Bryan, please. Good evening, Kathy Bryan, Deltona. Um, how many people know what a knee-jerk reaction is? I've watched it for years where I work, something's wrong, people go, well, let's do this, but they don't think about it. And that's what I'm, you guys, all of you for the most part, except for a couple you just got here, tend to do this. Um, number one with the proclamation for L. Ron Hubbard, did you think about it, research it, or did you just think, oh, maybe this is a good thing? Not necessarily. Commissioner McCool, last meeting. We should give money to the high school wrestling team because we saw a post about it on Facebook. And I know she asked you guys for private donations, but let's face it, how many schools do you have here in Deltona? 
and you start with one and everybody's going to be doing like this. Hell, I tried years ago when my youngest was in band to ask because when they were trying to buy new uniforms because the ones they had were 17 years old, we were having like a garage sale to make money. And that's, that's the truth of it. If you, if you are in an extracurricular school activity, you can expect to be doing fundraisers. I just said, can we put it on the sign? Oh, no, that's for city stuff only. Okay. So there's that. Mr. Jody Lee, when you first got here, fired a lawyer. Let's keep this one. No, let's keep that. Let's, let's get this city. And, and where did it go? So because you didn't sit and think about it. So now what do we have coming? We have, oh, be very, very quiet. It's budget season. Before you guys go along and just start going, yep, we've been doing this, we've been doing this, we've been doing this with these people, these people, and these people. Put some thought into it. We need stuff that is going to, that everybody needs. Um, not want. What's going to benefit the whole of the city? That being said, sounds like I'm hearing we still need to review our land use code. <laughs> You know, loud and clear. Um, I will say that for Twin Lakes, I think it's not so much that it was done, but how it went, went about. Um, there's a lot of places in Deltona that still need help with flooding. So let's, let's look at all of them. Um, last, and on a more positive note, I think, how many of you are aware that March is Traumatic Brain Injury Awareness Month? I'm aware. <laughs> I don't know if the city's ever done a proclamation for that, but I would like to see that. Brain injuries, unlike other injuries, you don't see a limp. You don't see a scar unless they've got their hair cut really short. You don't see, you don't see scars on the face, et cetera. And you can't see the damage done because people are never the same. So I have a daughter with a traumatic brain injury. I have worked with it for 30 plus years with people in their most critical phases of traumatic brain injuries. I've watched them through recovery. I have a good friend whose son went through the same thing my daughter did. And it's not easy. It is not easy. So in, in that proclamation, it's a good time to say, remind everybody, bicycle helmets. I think one of the stupidest things the state ever did was get aware of the motorcycle helmet law. Not on our roads, maybe in Texas where you have free open roads, but not on our roads. Helmets for playing sports, et cetera. Are they uncomfortable? Hell yeah. You know what's more uncomfortable? Brain injury. I believe that's all I got for tonight. Thank you, sirs. Terry Konash. Hello, gentlemen, and Dana, if you can hear me. I am Terry Konash. You've each received an email from me in regards to the Rain Tree subdivision proposal. We're just letting you know that we know about it. I know it's not on your list yet. There is a developmental uh, review committee on Thursday. A number of us will be there to voice our opposition to this proposal. Where this property is, it's zoned for one acre. The county plan, comprehensive plan, shows it to be one acre. We are asking you guys just to keep pushing the DRC to keep that going as one acre. Doyle Road can't handle it. They want to bring it straight to Doyle Road. Our schools are already getting to the point that they're full, and all the subdivisions that are currently out there are going to put them over the, the tilting edge. Cortland Park already has flooding issues within its community. Osprey Estates is now on hold because we know that there are a whole lot of flooding issues. Uh, the one Vineland Preserve flooded out Butler Ridge. My friends back there sold their house because it was so flooded. So we're asking you guys to keep your eyes on this one and please do not approve it when, if it comes to you but at least let the DRC know that we know it's coming and we're gonna be there to fight it. Thank you. Good evening, members of the commission. My name is Tina Swift and I live off Lemon Bluff Road in Osteen. Do not want me to yell. 
I grew up in Enterprise before Deltona annexed it and distinctly remember the beauty and pristine environment that we had before then. Now a resident of Osteen, and in response to the disaster that was Hurricane Ian, I was fortunate enough to be in a position to partner with many of you, state and local officials, businesses, nonprofits, and residents to support the homeowners of Osteen, Enterprise, Oak Hill, and Deltona by coordinating over water rescues, food and supplies, and various aid. I love our county, I love our town, I love our residents, <clears throat> and I love our way of life even more. On Thursday morning, I will leverage our public comment opportunity to speak against Rain Tree subdivision proposal. There are significant concerns with the request to include flooding, lack of infrastructure, and incomplete misalignment of the comprehensive plan. I would strongly recommend that members of the commission, regardless of your district, hold firm to the original approved plan of one home per acre. There are impacts from uncontrolled, poorly designed development that extend beyond Deltona city boundaries and seriously impact residents of Enterprise, New Smyrna, and Osteen in a disparate way. Ignoring these impacts is beginning to feel intentional and targeted. Please know that the residents of Osteen are smart. We pay attention, we vote, we know what protections our JPA offers. We are not going to accept the continued sprawl that the city of Deltona continues to approve, while at the same time not providing sufficient basic services like the Sheriff's Office request for additional officers. Thank you for your time and attention. Terry Ellis. Hi everyone, Mary Ellis. Um, so I would like to, first of all, there's a lot of new voices out here tonight and it's really, really nice to see new faces and new voices and to see people getting involved. So what I would like to say, and I've said it before and I'm gonna, ask, I'm gonna say it again, ask this, we have some new members on the commission, but I'm going to ask that this commission considers the fact that you are elected or appointed as representatives of these people and the people that are watching. You're elected to represent them. You're up there to represent them. You're not there to be on social media bashing each other. You're not there to talk about intelligence. Please, please, think about how you're impacting these people. Think about how you're, whether or not they wanna see you on social media or in the public bashing each other when they're talking about flooding, selling their house, um, um, trying to pay taxes, sewer. I mean, these people are talking about serious issues. And we have people on this commission that are making comments about someone's intelligence or making comments about someone's um, character and sexual orientation, and well, that person's gone, thank goodness. But please, consider making changes. These people deserve you to take your responsibilities extremely, extremely seriously. Yes, you, you, you do give up a little bit when you become when you, when, you, when you were elected and you sit up there. I've been asked about being in politics for 30 years. I've said no, I will never ever do it because that's not my lane. But for those of you that have taken that on, please appreciate, please appreciate the seriousness of what you do. And we need better. There are so many, so many problems in Deltona that need to be solved. We need better. And lastly, I would like to ask, do we have a date for either a workshop or something where we need to have a, a conversation about our strategic plan? That last conversation, even though we paid a consultant, that was not a conversation that talked about our plan. If if you have a plan, you need to manage to your plan. 
And so when are we going to have a follow-up? And also so that these folks have the opportunity for it to be well advertised and they have the opportunity to participate and comment on the plan that they have to live with. Thank you very much. Elmer Brian Daltona. You know, most of y'all know I work over in Daytona Beach. A couple weeks ago, we had a big race. We had a lot of people in town. I appreciate the job that the sheriffs have been doing over there. This week, we're in the middle of bike week. And again, the sheriffs are in town to make sure that we're safe. I want to take and extend all my thanks to the sheriffs that go out to Daytona Beach area and do the job, a thankless job. Trust me, I've seen them in action out at the flea market. And they're great guys, they really are. Um, there's not enough I can say about how much they protect us out in Daytona Beach during these big events that we have over there. Um, now, since my name was brought up, I will transition to another topic here. And you know, when we talk about public funds versus private funds, there's a reason why we say it that way. Because public funds are city funds. Private funds are HOA funds. If you live in a private HOA, the city has no jurisdiction inside that private HOA. None whatsoever. Except when they push the water in there. You know, I was very respectful during the time that these people spoke. I didn't say a word from over there, did I? No. Now, the thing is, is you spent city money inside a private HOA. You had to get an emergency order through a third company to take and pump that water. I asked for a full financial disclosure. What I was given was a joke. Literally, a joke. Now, here's the thing. If we're pumping that water out of there, you should be charging that HOA. Because I don't live in a gated community. There's a reason why I don't live in a gated community. I don't want to be told how to live. That's the reason why I moved here to Deltona. I used to live way down in Wakaiva. There was an HOA there that was so restrictive, if you walked out front with the wrong color shirt on, they told you, no, 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 no. That was enough of that. But when you take my public money and spend it to pump water out of an HOA that you don't have an interlocal agreement with, there's a problem there. It wouldn't be a problem if you actually had an interlocal agreement with them, but they won't agree to that. So it's not our fault that we have a problem with this. If the HOA was so serious about this, they would have gone to St. John's River and said, hey, we need help. But they didn't, did they? Did they? I didn't think so. So at the end of the day, it's not your job to be in a private HOA. Not at all. If the county wanted that water pump to check why the water wasn't draining, that's on the county, not the city. If the county wanted to get in that private HOA, that's on them. But now you put us in a liability issue. That's uncool. Robert Trombetta. Yes, Robert Trombetta, uh, 439 Golden Arm Road. And I'm here, I only speak for myself. I don't speak for any people here. I mean, I don't represent any people here. So um, I was going to start off talking about the Scientology thing, but that's just an unforced error. Uh, it, it just made us look horribly bad. And I can't imagine 
it's hard for me to imagine just any, how how we don't know the the what's going on with Scientology and uh, calling it a religion that's stretching it. I I think I may ask for a proclamation for my Presbyterian friends and get a John Knox proclamation and my Lutheran friends getting a Martin Luther proclamation. And I'm Catholic, so I'll get a Jesus one because I think Jesus founded my religion. So. Uh, but anyway, that's water under the bridge. Uh, I'd like to talk about something that's been said here at this this uh, place here. One of our people back there who constantly body shames people or quoted, called a commissioner a uh, poorly dressed street walker. Uh, he said something that bothered me, and I, I wanted to get a response from you guys. Two times he said stuff about the kids that graduate from Deltona and Pine Ridge High School. Both times he basically said 95% of them are going to flip hamburgers after they graduate. Now, let me just say that flipping hamburgers I'm not putting that down. God bless. They're making $15 an hour. They're, some of them are moving up in the company. It's a place to start. Uh, but to make our graduates look like they're imbeciles is an affront to all of us here. I don't have any kids here, but it's an affront to all the citizens. It's an affront to me. I don't know if it's an affront to them if they have kids here. Uh, so just keep in mind that try defending them once in a while. God bless, I mean, you, we see the, all of the awards they get. Um, so I just wanted to take my uh, time to just say, let's praise our high schools. I, I work out in Lake Mary. I talk to the teachers there. Do they have gangs? Yes. Do they have drugs? Yes. Do they have violence? Yes. Every school in the nation, every high school in the nation, even private schools, have problems, guys and ladies. Every one of them. So don't, let's not put down our school. We have, I think, what's proven is we've had 17 students graduate with eight, uh, HVAC certificates. We've had hundreds of kids graduating with associate's degrees. We have. I think the highest or one of the highest graduation rates in the county. Um, I mean, I think our schools are doing pretty darn good under the pressure of what society puts on them, of, of the drugs and all that stuff. They're coming out doing pretty darn well. So take the time to praise them. By the way, uh, two things. About the wrestling mats, I wanna know if some of the, uh, if the teams that use the basketball court have to pay for a basketball court, the football team has to pay for a football field, a wrestling mat is where they participate. I don't think the uh, people should pay for it. And Kyle Yassis is a Deltona student who won, who took seventh in the state, and is an all-state wrestler, and I think that kid needs a proclamation. Thank you. Mayor, that closes public comments. At this time, we're going to go ahead and go to old business. Request for approval of budget resolution and amendment for reimbursement of the overpayment of the proportionate fair share amount of $622,203.40 to Seafried Industrial Properties. Uh, since we do have uh, Commissioner McCool online, we're going to do like we've been doing in the past, and we're always going to let her go first. And then whoever's on the board, will uh, I will call upon them unless I call a point of privilege. So, Mary? Um, good evening. Um, Mary Lyson, Finance Department. Uh, the item before you is a request for a budget resolution and amendment, and this is for the reimbursement of the overpayment of the proportionate fair share that um, Seafood Industries paid to the city of Deltona. Um, this came before you on February 5th, and it was approved. Uh, the reason I'm bringing this back to you tonight is that we... Uh, finance and the budget policy prevent the city from paying for unbudgeted expenditures. 
The resolution and budget amendment will add this um, reimbursement of the overpayment to the budget and permit the um, finance staff to um, make the payment to Seafreed Industries. The um, budget, this was not a budget expense that was approved in September 2023, um, and the Florida statute and our policies um, require that we amend the budget in order to pay budgeted expenditures. Is there any questions on this? Thank you, we're gonna to go to Commissioner McCool and then Vice Mayor Jody Lee. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, nothing has changed since this was last presented, so I have no questions on the matter. Thank you, Vice Mayor Jody Lee. Thank you. Just one question. A question was brought up last meeting when we, well, we all know this was an overpayment, we have to pay it. But so, someone had asked what we have to take the money from to pay back this payment. It was, we had to short something else and take the money because it wasn't in the budget. Is there something that we're gonna lose out on somewhere? Um, for an expenditure like this that is unbudgeted, it's out of the general fund, it will reduce the fund balance in the general fund. Commissioner Harriet? Uh, Harry. Commissioner Harriet, there you go. Sorry, do you by any chance know what the general fund reserves currently sit at? Not at the top of my head, no. Okay. Um, we are working on our um, ACFR, Annual Co Comprehensive Financial Report. It's due by March 31st. We'll have an ACFR available to the city and it'll come before you for approval. And it will be um, in, in that. And you can also reach out to our department if you would like to know anything specific, we would welcome a visit to our department and to get to know you. And ex because I understand you do have a finance background. I think you're in budgeting. Is that correct, Senator yes, County? Okay, so um, it would be great to uh, get to know you and show you how we work at the city. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Any other questions for Ms. Uh, Mary? Is there a motion? No motion. I will. I'll move to a, I'll move to approve budget resolution 20-24-15 or sorry 2024-15 amendment 2024-032 for the reimbursement overpayment of proportionate fair share amount of six hundred twenty-two thousand two hundred three dollars and forty cents to Siegfried Industrial Properties I4 Industrial Park. So motion by Vice Mayor Jody Lee. Second. Second by Commissioner McCool. Uh, before we go to vote, is there any public comment? Sorry. Okay. Can I, Mary, can I ask you one, one more question before we, before we vote, please? And forgive me, I probably asked you this last time too. That's but okay. Just to reiterate, there's no way that this can be put, we're gonna start talking about the budget here very shortly. Mm -hmm. There's no way that this can be put on the talks for the budget coming up. Um, if you, yes, you can talk about it if you'd like. If you um, choose to um, uh, vote against this approval, we could probably add it to the 2025 budget. You have that option. In your professional opinion, is that not the best way to do it? That way we're not taking from the general fund? <coughs> and if you feel uncomfortable answering, you don't have to. Well, I guess it's really not my opinion. Sure. It's this overpayment was from 2022 um, and just fairly recently, they are requesting reimbursement, which they are owed. I guess it's a matter of how professional yeah. ethics, um, we can, you can vote against it and we can rebudget it and pay it out of 2025's budget. Thank you, Mary. It's sort of, do you wanna pay it now or do you wanna pay it later? We owe this money. Thank you so much. Commissioner Caldwell? Yes. Commissioner Harriet? My question's been answered. Voting. Vote. Uh, Yes. Commissioner McCool? Yes. Commissioner Shimkus? Yes. Vice Mayor Jody Lee? Yes. Mayor Vila? No. 5-1. Motion passes 5-1. to one. All right. This time we're going to go ahead to new business. 
Request for approval to contract with Don Bell Signs to replace the monitors of the digital monument, or monument sign located at the corner of 415 and Howland. Resolution number 2024-16 and budget amendment to transfer budgeted municipal complex funds to general fund repairs and maintenance. Ms. Baker. Bart. Barker. Mayor, if I may, just for a second. Um, Catherine and I have been discussing this this week. I had some questions from a couple of commissioners on this. Um, this sign, this particular sign is at uh, Hallam Boulevard in 415. Um, it's, the warranty on the sign has been expired for quite a while. Um, the warranties are for five years. Um, that was one of the questions that uh, I believe Commissioner Harriet had asked me. Um, we, Catherine reached out to Don Bell Signs. We got some prices on some uh, mon fixed monument signs. Uh, if you don't want to go back with the electronic signs because they are expensive, they're only a five year warranty on them. Um, and that's for parts. It's only one year labor or one year warranty for labor. So a uh, regular monument sign we can get for somewhere around $18,000 dollars versus this 41,000 to repair this or replace the panels in this um, this electronic sign so I just wanted to bring that up so if you have any more questions Catherine on top of it well, I was just going to give you a little bit of the background. So uh, when Mr. Chisholm was here, uh, we had talked about some of these signs because it was the 415 in Holland signed, and then there's one at Saxon and Normandy that has been repaired. That was under last year's budget. And then there was also, uh, he had a desire to um, install a new sign, and we were looking at the Holland and Graves area. Anyway, uh, there is just a huge difference between just a static monument sign that would have, and the Don Bell uh, created just like some quick mock-ups of like options that we could utilize. Um, just the, the, the cost effectiveness of, of the comparison between these two signs is, is quite substantial. And where this sign is located at Holland and 415, I question whether we should spend that money to replace the monitors because I don't know how often you're out in that area, but where the sign is located, you don't really see a lot of, of as you're turning and going through the intersection, I don't think it, there's a good line of sight for what's being displayed on that monitor. Um, some of the other signs, the ones at the park, I think at the parks make sense, but this location, I, I think if we want to put a sign there, I think something like this might be better. Thank you, Catherine. Commissioner McCool, and then Vice Mayor Jody Lee, Commissioner Shimkus, and then Commissioner Harriet. Thank you very much. I would agree with that assessment that being given where that is located, um, if we might want to do the, um, you know, the non-lighted signs, the other option, I would be in favor of that. Vice Mayor Jody Lee. That's, sorry, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. That's basically what I was going to say. I think our money is spent more wise on getting one of the regular signs like that because we're not factoring in electricity the whole nine yards and vandalism with kids. And when these were easy, we could pressure wash these, repaint them or something. You don't have to worry about. It. And I, I've seen the digital signs that we've had. They're 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 great when they're brand new, but after. I've seen them many times a week after they've been put in, they're still messed up and not worked right. We've always continuously had problems. We just spent a bunch of money fixing the last ones. So I'm all about saving the money and having a durable one built that we can just pressure wash and paint if we have to, then keep replacing it with electric signs all over. Because we have an issue with these newer signs. They always, like I said, they, for some reason the screens don't work. Our advertising on them don't get done on time. <laughs> on time, yeah. I mean, you go buy them sometimes, you'll see stuff that already happened two weeks ago, it's still advertising. That's kind of crazy. I just say put up a sign and be done. I agree. Commissioner Shimkus. Uh, thanks. So then um, I would first make a motion that we would uh, entertain a, a static monument sign at this location. Um, I don't know that we will, are prepared to decide on that sign tonight, so I think the motion would be to 
um, come back to us with finalized designs and costs for a static monument sign at that location. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and then I would just ask and add, um, I, I think the digital signs can be effective, as you mentioned, in certain areas. However, I would ask that, that if you don't have already, could you, uh, your department, provide us with a document that isolates out how you intend to use the signs, what uh, design languages you're using? Because I noticed on a couple of them, it appears that we are putting essentially a print ad on a screen, which is ineffective. So I'd like to see some kind of a standard process procedure that talks about font sizes, colors and contrast, how long it's going to be on the sign based on how fast people are moving on that road or if there's a stop sign or all those things that are part of, you know, an industry standard kind of document around uh, effective sign practices. Um, and I would also uh, ask that we look at what call to action we're putting on these signs because things like phone numbers are not going to be caught by drivers or other people. I would look at uh, short URLs perhaps or even a QR code. And although I will also say I'm not advocating drivers to take a picture of anything while they're driving, we do have people that are stopped at a stop sign, they have um, you know, opportunities for a passenger to take a picture, but a QR code would also allow us to do uh, tracking on the effectiveness of those ads and where people are getting their traffic from. So uh, if we don't have any policies on this now, I would, I would ask that we look at establishing that so that when we look at these other locations where electronic signs are more appropriate, that we can do those with, with much more effectiveness. Thanks. Commissioner Harriet. Thanks, City Manager. This is exactly what, what we were talking about. Um, moving forward, I think... Point of I, order? I'm sorry. Can I ask for a second on the motion before we have any more discussion? Sure. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to interrupt you. Before we get too far down the path there. And that's going to be for the... The motion, I'm sorry. I'll re, I'll, I'm sorry. Please. I kind of went long-winded there. I'll restate. The motion is to uh, convert this to a static monument sign and have uh, the department come back to us at a later date with official quotes and designs for a sign. Finalized designs. Yeah. There is a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. There's a second by Commissioner McCool. Commissioner. And so just the, uh, Go ahead. I'd like to just add that um, I think that we're talking about $20,000 here, and I, I don't know what larger plan we're all thinking in our heads. Um, so I just would like to see this properly procured, send it out to an RFP. Let's get a couple other vendors uh, to bid on it. There's got to be, there's got to be dozens of them out there that do signs. So, so I, and, and I got a couple questions. Um, I because I see here that we removed. Is that correct, Catherine? Did we remove number D, letter D? <coughs> yeah, a. I don't. It's the one on Saxon by the Wendy's. Saxon the and really Normandy. old looking one. Yeah. That was removed last year because that was one that, that there was talk of refurbishing it. Um, but then based on the location, it, and there was one just like a couple blocks up the road. So we decided just to remove that one altogether. And D, I can't tell you the history of that. That was removed before I came to the city, so I'm not quite certain. Yeah, I'm just trying one. to figure out, because if we remove some of this, and to your point, can we refurbish them, right? Um, just looking for ways to save us money. And, and I think it's a great idea with the gentleman and, and, and Commissioner McCool have already said, right? We, some of these make sense, uh, like the ones in front of like West Crow Park, areas that people are walking already. I, I don't have issues with those being digital. And to that point as well, they, they tend to fail very constantly. And I don't know if Don Bell was one of those that we previously contacted or contracted with. I know we, we, we talked about it very briefly, the ones that kept failing. Um, there was some, something wrong with the LED boards. Well, I can tell you the oldest signs that we have, which is uh, the 415 in Holland and the one that we just fixed, were, were uh, built by Stewart Signs. Okay. Um, those are the oldest ones. Those are the ones that caused the most problems. The rest, the ones at the parks, those were installed by Don Bell. Okay. Um, those warranties are, for some of them, it, it's expired for two others. They're going to expire at the end of next month. And so, yes, I agree with you. There's just, it seems like there's just constant repairs needed to these signs. So, I mean, yeah, we'll I, see how, I mean, the, the one at uh, Saxon and Normandy was just repaired. So, you know, we'll get a sense on how, the, how that. 
I just think works. moving forward, you know, we really need, and this is all going to fall in with our land use codes. I mean, I, I'm more of the idea, and I know we have a motion and a second already, so I'm not going to I'm not going to deviate from that. But I'm more of the idea, maybe waiting for this to probably come up because it's not an urgent. Or is it urgent? Oh no, not at all. Not for, I mean, the, the one, the only urgency is just it doesn't work. And I, quite honestly, I, I just stopped paying for the repairs because it was like every few weeks you're just paying for the yeah. same repair because these 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 two older signs had just reached the end of their their life. They, these signs last about ten years. And these still signs, and I'm not an expert, right? But I'm pretty sure they're a lot safer. Uh, than cars trying to read what they're saying. That's why I said the ones in the park make a little bit more yeah, sense. The, the parks make sense, but like this, because I, I drove that area today just because I hadn't been out there in a while just to yeah. kind of refresh. You're not looking at the signs. You're looking to whether you can turn right on red. You're looking, you know... Because of the you, angle of that road. And yeah. just the where it's located because the stop sign, or the stoplight's here, and then the sign is behind you. So even if you're stopped there, turning left down to 415, you're not going to read the sign because it's behind you. Thank you. Is there any public comment? And Randy then I'll White. get to Vice Mayor after public comments. I feel like I'm in the twilight zone. This was a good conversation. This is what we want on other agenda items as well. Um, most of my questions actually got answered because of the great questions you guys had. Uh, I only had two when I first came up here, but now I got quite a few more. Um, I understand the warranty. I did the research, 10 to 15 year lifespan. What is the current warranty being offered though? Like I hear that it's out and it's, the previous one was five years, but what are, what is Don Bell willing to warranty his work? Okay, so that's my first question. Because five years on a 10 year lifespan seems eh, you know, but this is me personally. Um, also, the metrics was what I was going to bring up. Uh, some of these signs that you know that was already mentioned, just it's pointless to have them. It's not safe to have them out there. Um, so that I'm glad that was also brought up. Um, what was the other one here? Metrics offset. I think that was it, really. Um, was just uh, the other. Oh, that's what it was. It just happened. This motion. How, how does that work? Because what your motion is is not what is on here. So if I'm not mistaken, you're either supposed to table it or deny this, right? You, you don't create a whole new motion that's never even been put on here based on what may or may not come forward later versus the static sign. Like we're talking about LED signs. If static isn't even in here. So I think you guys need to fix that as well. Thank you. That closes public comments. Vice Mayor Jody Lee. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, on that sign, the like, thing was brought up, uh, I think you did, Commissioner Shimkis, about the, the taking pictures of that sign. Where that sign is, it's you, you can't sit there and look at that sign. And coming through it off 415, turning on howling, howling, it, it goes so quick and you're only, there's no light, there's a light leaving but not coming into town from there. Unless you're sitting at the red light getting on 450 and you happen to turn your head backwards and look at the sign. So to have an electric sign with a digital display to tell you something's going on in Deltona right there is quite asinine. No, that's why I agree with you. It's, it's, I don't think we should replace monitors. I think after, after uh, some discussions with Glenn, we decided that uh, a static sign, if we want a sign there at right. all, a static sign would be better. Right. Well, I, I, I believe all the entrances to our city, we should have a welcome to Deltona. I'm, I'm all for a sign that's set, but just not one of these electrical signs because it's that right there is a bad spot. And I, I have to say I agree with uh, Commissioner Harry about putting it out for bids. We have small sign companies in town that can do signs too. I think it should go out for a bid. Yeah, we'll do that. And I believe Brandy's right about the motion, the motion about denying this and then we can make a get a consensus to put it out the, the other way. But that's just my opinion. That's it. Would anybody like to retract their motions or seconds? I say we just call for a vote and if you want to deny it tonight sure. and then we can come up there. Right. That would be a more appropriate, I think. Yeah, so to clarify again, um, the, the motion is to uh, transition to a static sign and come back to us with finalized designs and cost. But just for clarification, Madam Attorney. Yes. 
Yes, Mr. Mayor. Is, uh, is, the mo is that an appropriate motion even though it hasn't been advertised? I mean, in the past, policy, the commission has often changed motions around based on circumstances that were occurring. So, I mean, you can either, you know, accept the advice you received from the audience as to technically taking, you know, that step separately from the motion because the item on your agenda has now changed. So my question is to you, Madam Attorney, mm -hmm. not the audience or anybody up here. You're the one with the legal expertise. And, excuse me, and in the, in, regardless so of what shares. happened in the past, right? We all make mistakes. Apparently I'm guilty of it, right? In your moving forward, is this the correct motion to take? I think that if the commissioner wants to keep his motion on the table and that he has a second that he may proceed. Okay. So it is Marsha's legal opinion that your motion is correct. So can we move forward? Can we move forward with the vote? Commissioner Caldwell? Oh, no. Commissioner Harriet? No. Commissioner McCool? Yes. Commissioner Shimkus? Yes. Vice Mayor Jody Lee? No. Mayor Villa? No. One to five, it fails. Huh? Four to two. Oh. I think it was two to four. Yeah, two to four. Mayor, if I may, I miss? sorry to interrupt. Um, if we, if you, you know, this motion failed, what it sounds like. So what we can do is we'll make sure the sign is turned off. We can leave it off. And then we can come back to you at a later date once we go out for RFP for the signs. We can come back to you, um, you know, bring it back forward about the monument signs. The basic thing tonight was just want to make sure that you all are okay with transitioning to the monument signs. So, so here's, here's what I'll do, right? I'll entertain a motion to table this item. I don't no, Phil. I don't think we need to table okay. it. Just my opinion. I think I think you voted it down, so I, I think we're good. I think we have direction. All right. So let's go ahead and move forward then. We're on comments and consent items. Any public comment? To the city clerk. Wait, we have to do the TPO. Nine B. Oh, Nine my B. apologies. I skipped one. Okay. I was ahead of myself, I crossed it off. Okay, consideration of appointment of city representative to the Volusia County TPO's Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee. Uh, Joyce? So you have Victor Ramos's um, application, which was in the packets, but I did have one other applicant, and I just checked a few minutes ago, I have no others, um, from Nick Luley, and you all should have his application in front of you, and I believe I also emailed it to all of you. So those are your two choices. So another quick question, and I'm sorry, Marsha, I'm not picking, I promise I'm not picking on you. Uh, since Nick Lilly wasn't on here, should we, would, should, it wasn't advertised apparently, or obviously because he applied later, should this be tabled to the next commission meeting? I know. Madam Clerk, did, was there a time frame on the ability to respond to this? Yeah, it was open till filled. This is a... This particular appointment is very difficult. We usually don't get many, if any. <laughs> so we usually rely on the commission and whatnot. We just happen to get a late one. Okay, then I and think we it's- We put it on because Commissioner McCool asked for it and she specifically asked for Victor Ramos. Then it's appropriate to vote okay. on both of them. So I wanna make sure we're dotting our I's and crossing our T's. Is there any comments? Uh, we'll start with Commissioner McCool and then anybody else that comes on the board. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, I appreciate that. Um, I would like to thank both applicants for their application. At this time, it is my recommendation to move ahead to assign um, Victor Ramos with this position. As we all know, former Commissioner Ramos has experience with TPO and with uh, BPAC. Um, he's been an avid cyclist and pedestrian and park advocate since he has been in Deltona. Even after leaving uh, his city position, was a great 
steward of our resources and continues to um, tout those resources. So I would like to move ahead with a recommendation of um, Victor Ramos as our applicant for the BPAC. Uh, I, I'd like to make some comments if nobody else, because I don't see anybody else. I, I have some concerns with both, actually, with both applicants, right? Um, and that we have two, so we, we're going to have to pick. But, you know, on one hand, we have somebody that's kind of running for office. On the other side, we have uh, somebody that is doing stuff for Halifax, is very involved in a lot of other stuff. I just don't understand how either, I mean, they applied, right? So they, they know their limitations, but uh, I'm a big believer of letting other people have a turn at of trying to be involved in the city. Um, I know Commissioner Ramos served the city and, and you know, I'm very thankful for him. Um, I know somebody else is trying to run for office, so I, I just have some concerns. I wish other residents uh, would have applied. Uh, I know there's a lot of, we have so many residents here that love bike paths, they, they love the trails. Um, just, I'm hoping that no one is losing too much hope in our city and that they still are interested in getting involved. So uh, that's my two cents. Uh, I don't know if anybody else wants to make any other comments. Mr. Mayor, to that, I would like to make a comment on that, that sure. I do believe that, um, I do believe that they, they both would understand their own schedule and we did um, advertise this for quite a while um, with no applicants other than um, Mr. Ramos and um, you know, it was announced that he was interested in the position, and then the position looked like you know someone else was interested in it again. And you know, I would say to that, um, you know, showing up for these meetings is really important. And um, I don't have a problem in believing that either one of them could meet the commitment. And you know, one of the biggest things here is I really wish that we would take politics out of all of this. But this is somebody that is wanting to serve on a board that they're familiar with. And when I say familiar, I mean with the biking and pedestrian activities. Um, and I would hate to think that politics get in the way of somebody representing our city well. Um, this position had been advertised for a while. If, if the Madam Clerk could tell me how long it was advertised for. We were notified on February 5th at your um, regular commission meeting, so it's been advertised a month. So there you go. I stand by my um, conviction on this, and um, it be the will whatever the commission decides. But we need to fill that position. Um, it's important that Deltona is represented on all of our boards when it comes to TPO. Uh, so I would like to move again, move forward. Is there any public comment, sir? Is there any motions? Mr. Mayor, at this time, I would like to make a motion to appoint Victor Ramos to the BPAC committee for the TPO. There's a motion by Commissioner McCool to appoint Victor Ramos to TPO and a second by Commissioner Colwell. Commissioner Colwell? Yes. Commissioner Harriet? Yes. Commissioner McCool? Yes. Commissioner Shimkus? Yes. Vice Mayor Jody Lee? Yes. Mayor Villa? No. Got it. 5-1. Motion passes 5-1. to one. All right, this time we're going to go ahead and move to comments on consent items. Okay. Ash hole. Figured I'd call it myself first. All right, so I've got a lot of questions on this, and I hope to see the same amount of questions as we saw on a simple sign on this. Uh, I, I'm going to just break it down through this because it's going to be more than four minutes, so I'll just go through what I can. Right off the top, it talks about that we uh, budgeted for a data analytical software system. That's what we budgeted for, specifically. 
It states that 20,000 was saved, but I don't see anything showing us that 20,000 was saved, nor the original cost. So there's some documentation there that would be nice. Then it talks about an additional $21,000 being purchased for software for an incident commanders, right? What other options of similar software for incident commanders are there? Is there just one, and since it's not compatible suddenly, we're just gonna change all together the software that's needed? Because what I'm looking at further down is that this new program actually helps with department policies and wellness, which isn't the same thing at all. Um, when it talks about the software not being able to integrate with the AirPack software, I'm, I'm looking at the dates of when all this took place. And I have to ask, was this not determined previously that there would be an issue when, when this was brought up and asked? Because I believe the AirPacks was already in place. So did nobody look and confirm with the organization that their software would be compatible before we budgeted for it? Because I mean, how else did we screw that one up? Uh, if we go further down, it talks about what this system is gonna provide, and I'm a little mind blown on that because uh, they're talking in here about invaluable support. Invaluable meaning not able to be measured because there's no value to it, right? But that, that's currently not true, right? There would be value to this system. And there are m total metrics to measure this. And, and you can look at, let's just break down what it, it involves, right? So it involves features like therapist. Is, is that not already covered for our fire personnel under some of our programs? And if not, are you telling me that this software is gonna provide free therapy or is it an additional cost for a therapist? There's also a difference. Um, it talks about educational materials, uh, videos, guides, Google, YouTube. Like why are we paying what looks to be, if I'm doing the math right, a 50,000 start with an additional 30,000 a year for this kind of stuff, to, to build department policies? Do we not have current department policies? Like who's been doing it all this time? Moving on, it talks about, um, the, the kicker was the, the uh, physical fitness programs because we already paid for the gyms to be installed. So now we need to pay someone to do what? I, again, I'm, I'm really confused on how we went from needing something for incident commanders which could be a very valuable tool, so I think we should be looking at something comparable that is compatible, instead of saying, well, let's just scratch that and spend 30000 to $50,000 on a, I'm guessing it looks to be some type of, uh, possibly even an app software in, included, uh, that will help with policies and wellness. Like, if you guys don't have questions about this, and I'm talking deep questions, because I didn't even get to the other probably 35 I have, then uh, I don't think any of you should be running again. Thank you. Kristen O'Brien. Hello, good evening, everybody. Um, uh, it's uh, software related, so I'm back. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I uh, actually wanted to uh, actually get some clarification as well. Not necessarily voice concerns, but um, just get more clarification on this, which is, I think, necessary. Um, I'm, I'm also a little confused on kind of what the software does. Um, so my questions are, is it actually mandatory? Because it sounds like it is like kind of compliance related, um, but they're the large percentage of the justification, which might just be uh, a writing thing, um, does focus on a lot of this wellness. So I am kind of curious on like exactly what the software does and what the percentage of it um kind of focuses on. Most importantly, uh, this is a, uh, it's a prorated uh, subscription and then it's going to go into the next year. So at the end of this prorated, um, the real question is, is how are the measures of success going to be uh, measured? You know, again, great, great point. What are the metrics? How is that data going to be presented? Um, uh, has there been a survey or anything about uh, this uh, app and um, you know, if uh, our folks are going to be participating in it. You know, I've used uh, higher education apps like this. I believe, uh, if I'm correct, this is like a uh, like a micro content learning app. So you're going to be able to see like different lessons and and uh, and different best practices and things that uh, obviously go along with. Um, 
you know, with firefighting. So, you know, I'm not saying it's it's not necess uh, it's not uh, com completely frivolous, but I just think there needs to be a little more due diligence. Also, you know, at first we um, had software that was not able to, to integrate. I, I, there should be a giant conversation on that. Like, who exactly authorized that software? How wasn't uh, it? Inc how was it incompatible? Um, how did we find that? How do we prevent it? Most importantly, how do we know that this software is going to be compatible? What are the assurances that this program works, and then also what are the guarantees? Uh, it is $62,000. That could easily be uh, a salary of a person um, that is, you know, in the city um, that could be helping with training, helping with compliance, helping with best practices, helping with um, uh, training and engagement, things like that. Um, within the uh, marketing collateral that was attached, it mentioned that it tracks ongoing personnel compliance and knowledge management. So again, how is that tracked? Are we going to be able, at the end of the first period, determine how many of our personnel actually used it, what their success rate was? Um, you know, it, within this program, there should be things like click-through rate, like success rate, like uh, the metrics of like which videos are using more than others. So how much of that is going to be accessible to us, and how much of that are we going to be able to use to make the decision about the next fiscal school year. Um Let's see if there's anything else. Yeah, that's basically it. Again, I've actually used these programs, and I've used them a lot in my workplace. Uh, my background is actually in human resources uh, and staffing and recruiting. So I've been familiar with a lot of these programs, and the engagement tends to just drop right off after a while, if, especially if there's not an accountability or responsibility, and if it's not mandatory within a person's job. So um, yeah, again, I just think uh, there should be um, more conversation, and hopefully there's some clarification on that. Thank you. That closes public comments. Thank you. <clears throat> this time we're going to go and do request approval for the purchase and annual service agreement for Lexi Pool Software. Fire Chief Bill Snyder. Good evening, uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commission. Thank you uh, for uh, considering this. Uh, yes, it's uh, we're looking to um, myself and Deputy Chief Bush Wisher, uh, Bill Snyder, Fire Chief. Sorry, didn't introduce myself. So uh, yes, we're looking for two different software programs. One is a policy program, um, and the other one is a wellness program. Um, these are both software programs um, that can be accessed um, through several ways. The policy program itself is a um, is a program that's used by several fire departments across the nation, including three in this county. Um, and that, um, what the soft, what what it does is, is um, we have a bunch of policies already written for the fire department. Um, those policies are, to the best of our ability, uh, relevant and uh, compliant with state laws and stuff like that. However, um, uh, state laws and federal laws change all the time. This company, what this company does is it takes our current policies and it reviews them against a, a list of their the policies that they have. There. Uh, they're a public safety entity that um, that helps public safety agencies with policies, uh, both police, fire, and, and so forth. Um, so what they they have a list of policies that all fire departments should have, and um, they compare our policies to what their policies are. If we don't have a policy that they recommend, then we would look to enact that policy. Um, the policies that we do have, we would compare to their policies because their policies are vetted through the state laws, through federal laws, through case law, and through best practices. So it's an, an ability to uh, compare what we have to what we should have. Um, on top of that, um, the, the, the policies are then put into a program which can be accessed either by computers, by tablets, by smartphones. They can be accessed anywhere at any time by our firefighters if they need to have that information. Uh, the information, the uh, policy are also put once the policies are put out it has a tracking program that goes along with it that tracks the uh, tracks the user to make sure that the user has read the program and that they've signed off that they um, are uh, that they understand the program if they don't understand the program then we can provide further training to them uh, the fourth part of this is it has a training component to it so that um, each day when a, when a firefighter comes to work 
um, every, it may not be every shift, but uh, uh, almost every shift, they will get a, a training bulletin on, our pol on a policy. Um, they, uh, the training bulletins come out and they, they train on our firefighters on all of our policy, but they concentrate mostly on the high risk, low frequency calls. High risk being the policies that uh, deal with uh, people that may be, uh, you know, in trouble and maybe, you know, uh, you know, could die basically, or policy or or incidents where uh, di you know destruction could be, could occur. Um, that, that's out there. Uh, they also um, uh, um, they also concentrate on the ones uh, the high risk, low frequency things where there's little time to think. So that these policies are drilled into our firefighters. So when they get out there and they have those situations that are high risk, where people could die or property could be destroyed, and it's something that's not occurs all the time, that and they have very little time to think that those policies are right there in the back of their head because they've been trained on it over and over. Um, that's, the, that's the policy program. The wellness program is a, is a wellness program that uh, can be accessed 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, it's uh, a wellness program that's the, the main component to it is mental wellness. Um, as, as you probably know, uh, first responders are far more susceptible to uh, PTSD and suicide and things like that. Um, this app uh, would be available to them uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, it would have in the app, in the app um, on their phone, they would have the ability to bring up both local and uh, non-local resources. In the fire department, we have what we call peer support personnel that um, that are trained um, to the basic level of mental health and, and mental wellness and can help our firefighters if they need that help. Um, on top of that, there's programs out there like uh, Redline Rescue that um, uh, has b not only uh, local peer support people from other departments, but also um, but also uh, uh, clinicians, both uh, uh, psychiatrists and psychologists that are available that have been trained by firefighters. So these people understand who firefighters are. They um, um, they have gone out to training sessions. Um, they've seen the, the different things that we do, and then they've gone into fire stations and they've spent time with firefighters, talking to firefighters about what firefighters do. Um, the EAP system that the city has is a good system. However, it's been proven across it by many people from the Health and Safety Collaborative from the Florida Fire Chiefs Association that um, a lot of times when, just because it says that you can help first responders doesn't mean that you know anything about them and they spend their first three or four sessions just figuring this out, okay? So these are well-trained, well-provided uh, professionals. Um, so it, it provides that stuff at the, at the click of a button. You can, you, can, uh, you can call peer support personnel until somebody picks up and they can talk to them. Uh, they can look at other resources and decide whether or not um, they, they want to talk to a certain type of person. Maybe they don't want to talk to somebody in our department. Maybe they want to talk to somebody in another department. Maybe they don't want to talk to a chief officer. Maybe they want to talk to a, 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 a firefighter or a, or a lieutenant or something. It gives them all those options. Um, and um, mental health is, is a major concern in the fire service. Uh, this app also not only deals with mental health, but it also has issues with cancer, cancer prevention. Those are some of the programs that they talked about that are for cancer prevention on fire scenes, how to decon, how to do all that type of stuff. And it just reinforces that type of stuff, plus gives them the resources they need if, if they want to go look for that stuff. Physical fitness is another part of that. And mental health, physical fitness, and... Um, and cancer prevention are the three things that the the three major uh, concerns that the Florida Fire Chiefs Association's Safety and Health uh, Committee has been working on for the past 10 years or more. So this app would give uh, you know it would give a firefighter that's sitting there contemplating suicide that would give them a, a resource that's right there in their hand that they would be able to uh, access um, access help if they need. Um, a lot of times that help's not there, and they actually succeed in, in what, they, what they're thinking about doing. So that's what both of these programs are. 
Um, the way we wanted to pay for this is there we did have a, uh, a, um, a software program that was, um, sorry, I'm about to drop that. Um, we did have a software program that we were going to use for our incident commanders um, when they get on fire scenes. The, we, when we budgeted this back back in February and March of last year, when budgeted start, we looked at for the different programs that we like that we were interested in. The it, the program that we were interested in was we was interested in it because it had they they told us that they were working on a component that would integrate with our air packs and show us exactly where firefighters are on. The Seen, and th that way, those if if there was a mayday situation where a firefighter went down and was hurt or lost or whatever the deal was, it would give us a precise location for that firefighter for us to go in there and 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 try to save that person and save time by getting to them. Um, now they said that their program was going to have this um, when when we looked at it, and that's why we budgeted it. Um, they said they didn't have it yet, but they were close. So once the once the budget was approved. We we started looking into the process, and lo and behold, they haven't got as far with it as possible. So, doing our due diligence, we're not because that is the major component of this incident command software, and we did, we couldn't find any other incident command softwares that had this component. And since it doesn't have this component, we don't want to move forward with it because it doesn't have what we need. We also don't want to be the brand new guinea pigs that are that are trying this out at the last second. So that's why we uh, that's why we're asking not to purchase this particular software now, but to move forward with uh, the softwares, the other software that we're talking about, we were planning on budgeting, uh, putting in the next year's budget. Um, but since we're not going to move forward with the budget, with the uh, budget for the incident command software this year, we would like to purchase um, this other software that helps us with our policies um, and this other software that helps us with mental, mental wellness. Um, with that, um, we were looking to purchase it through the source well uh, contract. Uh, the, the city is a um, the city is a member of uh, the source well purchasing group. Um, uh, they are a cooperative purchasing group, and from what I understand, they do um, they do uh, competitive bidding um, on these products. Uh, so that the city uh, doesn't have to do that work. They do it for us. That's my understanding of the source well uh, agreement. And because they're under the source well agreement, because the city is a part of the source well, ha has the source well as part of their group, we can purchase this software. Um, we, uh, when it comes to the policy software, we looked at other, other softwares and um, we uh, actually demoed a, a, a second software and it just doesn't do as much as this software does for the policy part of it. So with that, um, anything to add? I'll take any questions from... Okay, we have uh, Commissioner Harriet on, on the board, but before that, I'm going to take a point of privilege. I, I just want to ask a quick question, and then I'll let him ask his. What was this? You, you said that this app was almost fully developed or the, the, the software you guys needed. What, was that a consultant's uh, advice, or was this like an intern or somebody dropped the ball internally, or was it a mistake? I mean, we were looking uh, to, to purchase an incident command software for our incident command people. Um, but we were also looking for something that had a uh, component to it that would identify where our personnel were. This software did both of that according to what we were told when we were when we when we uh, looked at the software. We said it. They they told us it was right around the corner, and that by the time the next budget came around, that they would have that incorporated into their budget. Um, so we took them for their word. Um, and um, we didn't pay them anything. No, we didn't pay them anything. And then when we got to this year's budget and we did our due diligence looking into the software to make sure that it was going to do what they said it was going to do, and we found out it didn't, now we're at a point where it doesn't make sense to purchase that software. Does it track each individual employ firefighter or, or EMT personnel, or does it track the trucks or the vehicles? Well, when it, when it is, is eventually developed, it doesn't do any of that right now. 
what, what it does is it provides the incident commander with a, a template. Right now we use paper. And sure. on that paper we have a bunch of benchmarks that we, that we look to try to accomplish at a fire. Uh, we also have an area where we can list the, the, the trucks and all the different things that are on that fire. And, um, and, that's, and, and so we were going to take that out of, the, out of the paper age and bring it into the computer age, which would also hook into our dispatch system so that when we went on a call, the units that were responding with us would automatically populate in that software. And then what it was, that software was supposed to do that it doesn't do is it was supposed to, once our guys got off the truck and they turned on their air pack, it was supposed to identify that individual air pack so that we could see each individual that was on that scene that was wearing air pack that was inside uh, a, uh, 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 ideal, uh, uh, a hazardous atmosphere. So they're inside the house, they're battling the fire, we can see where they're at, we can see where the air packs are at. We assume the people are with them. Um, and that's what the software was supposed to do. But it, it, they haven't got that part completed. They gotta, they gotta work with several different uh, uh, air pack companies around, uh, that, that are around, that they, you know, so that they, you know, we, we have MSA, other people have a, a brand called Scott. There's uh, a brand called Dreger, so they're trying to work with these different companies so that they can combine them all into this software program, and they just haven't got there yet. Is there only one program that, that's able to be compatible with what, with what you have now? Is that what you're trying to say? I, I'm, I don't know of a program out there. I, I think we're confusing a lot of things. What he said in answer to your question is unrelated to the actual functionnel of the person, the I, item I, Commissioner, I understand the function. But I, I'm asking questions for a reason. Okay. So, um, as far as the, the mental health portion of it. Yes. Uh, the, the other software. Yes. Right? Does, and again, maybe, maybe I'm out of line here, but does the health insurance that each of us get, does that not offer a, like a phone number that we can call when we're, when we're having a situation? For example, I'm, I'm where I work, sure. they offer I, insurance, right? And I think they do, but I, I don't know for sure, so I don't want to say yes or no. I, 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 I'm not sure. Okay. But this off, the, the application, um, you know, provides that uh, with quick access. They, uh, in, in our, our, our health insurance program does offer like our EAP system where you can call them, uh, call them and, and get a hold of a professional. Some, uh, if it's after hours, you're not getting a hold of any professional. Um, um, so there's, all, but you're also able to get a hold of what a, what's called our peer peer support personnel, which are personnel in our department as well as other in other departments around, and um, you're able to with one touch of a button call a bunch of those people until someone answers, and then you can talk to those people, or you can have access to other non-local uh, programs where you can look and see who who it is you may want to speak with. With, including up to a professional, but you, you know, it, uh, psychologists and psychologists are only available from eight to five, Monday through Friday, for the most part. Thank you, Commissioner McCool, and then Commissioner Harriet. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate it, um, Chief. I just wanted to go in. Um, and ask, I understand that they have the, the um, training components also, and they can do them, is it, um, because just in reading up on them, they can do from their um, phone, right, tablet, or computer, is that true? Yes, uh, if you're talking about the wellness app, they can access that from anywhere. Um, yeah. the, the, uh, the policies app, the training would come to them when they, when they report to work. Okay. And I also understand that um, there are like, I mean, 1,100 courses added on here. Um, and just looking at it, um, that they do the track and report for your ISO training, correct? I mean, there, there are quite a few. I was looking at some of the other municipalities that use them. I mean, I know that we are our own, but there are small and larger um, departments using this software, right? 
Yes, the, especially the policies one. Um, there is a way to track um, who has read the policies, um, who has signed off that they understand the policies, that that's all able to be tracked. Um, in the wellness app, there is a tracking component to that to where we can see um, how many people are accessing different parts of the uh, different parts of the app um, to see whether or not, you know, as things are going on, if we see that there's a high instance of somebody accessing a certain part of the app, then we can provide, you know, uh, uh, provide training to the department as a whole um, with that. And, um, but yes, there is a tracking component component to it to where we can see uh, who's access, well, we can't see who because it is anonymous, uh, but we can see, um, um, we can see what is being tracked on the app or on the software program. Um, so we can tell um, whether a peer support person was uh, was accessed or whether a psychologist was accessed or whether, well, I'm not sure about a psychologist because that would be personal information, but we can see uh, whether or not they, they accessed different, the, the, the different apps that are part of this um, to see whether or not, um, to see what they're using, to see how we can help them further. All right, let me ask you this. Right now, who is managing CEUs? Who is managing ISO training and SOPs? Who's, who's doing that right now? Yeah, we have a, a bunch of people tracking that stuff. Uh, Chief Swisher tracks um, uh, all of our policies and all of that type of stuff. Um, our, our EMS chief tracks our, 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 our CEOs when it comes to our paramedic and EMT licenses and that type of stuff. Um, and um, our training chief track, tracks our ISO compliance and who's, who's done the training uh, for different parts of ISO. So it's kind of a, a mixture of, of, of all of us. Okay, well, let me ask you this. Does this software take over the human resources that we need to manage these platforms, the CEUs, the SOPs, the ISO management? Does that take over doing this? Once it, does it become automated to the point that it frees up any labor time for anyone managing that right now? Huh? Hey, man. Go ahead. No, ma'am. Uh, so the way the program works is we write a policy. We submit that to uh, to them. They review it for the uh, state laws, international law, or not international, uh, federal laws, uh, NFPA, or anything else that uh, is related to whatever that policy is written for. Then they send back recommendations and they say this is what we recommend. And then we can either change it according to our local, keep components of it. So we're still heavily involved in the writing of it. By the way, I have a lot more jobs than that, despite what the crowd's saying back there. Um, but it takes those components and gives them back to us to review, and then we go back and forth in that process. And that's why the integration process takes six months to begin with, because we have to review all the policies that we have been writing all this time. Into, into effect and re, rewrite them and reorganize them so that every every quarter, every every year, what um, they do is they review it for us and say, hey, there's a new law out about, I don't know, let's say IV catheters, and that new law has to be in this policy. That does not mean they put in a policy for us. We have to actually go back and review the policy, find out how we need to hook it into the policy, hook it into the policy, agree to it, and then write an exam for it, and that exam gets put out um, through their little um, training seminars that they put out. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir, it does. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor, that is all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Harriet. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, give me one second. John, down one more note because I think Brandy got 35 questions and I got 36. Thank you, Chief. We we spoke about this earlier. I I spoke with the city manager the other day about this. Um, you've you've discussed a lot of the questions that I've I've had regarding the functionality. I still have more questions on the functionality. 
incident management has been brought up a couple times. How does this software package address incident management? It doesn't. Okay. It doesn't. With, with the program it, that we were going to use It only addresses for... policy, wellness, and then the training for those two policy and wellness modules. Correct. Okay. Is this an emergent need that we have data to support, or is this something that is a nice to have right now? Um, why is this coming to us uh, during the year and not continuing it, or not uh, through the budget process? Well, uh, uh, the reason that I'm bringing it forward is because we were planning on budgeting it for next year. Um, the, the money we feel has become available this year because we're not going to purchase uh, the app that, because it doesn't do what we thought it was going to do. Um, and so that's why we're bringing it forward now. So, so is this more important, is this a more critical need than the functionality that was originally budgeted for? Well, yes, because the thing that we originally budgeted for doesn't do what they told us it was going to do. Okay. You've, you've mentioned a couple times that uh, the functionality regarding policy on this software package. Uh, I believe uh, Chief Bush mentioned that uh, there will be a back and forth between us and the, uh, the program management team that would involve us sending them our policy, them reviewing it against uh, state and federal uh, law and uh, NFPA standards, and then it would come back to us to review their comments. Their recommendations, yes. That seems like a very lengthy and heavy lift. Do we have staff that is available to do that? Um, Behind you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, does yeah. that, does that mean it's going to fall well, on one guy? So, no. Um, we, well, a large portion of it would fall on one guy because he's in charge. But we do have a policy committee um, that, that, that meets on a regular basis and um, helps us uh, craft our policies. And, um, and then Chief Swisher um, reviews them uh, and makes sure they're, they're all in line with the way our policies are supposed to be written. And then the policy policies enacted once they're approved. Okay, so this is largely a database warehouse that has a training component on it as well. Where do where are our current policies stored? Our current policies are stored um, in, um, what do they call that program? So when I first got here, we were just paper only. So not that I'm an IT member at all, but um, I got with IT, Johnny Barrett, and we developed uh, an email account on Outlook. And through that email account, they're all in folders already. So they're already basically in a data folder. Um, and then we basically make them in Word and then save them to PDF once they're finalized. Um, they go through, if it's something that needs to go to Marsha, we send it to Marsha. If it's something that needs to go to HR, we try to send it to HR. Um, we try to send them where they, where they go. What this will help us do is also help us not have to send them so much to legal and so much to HR unless it's specific about Deltona. So um, that's another plus to the, to the program. Um, and, in, and that's the biggest plus is its li li liability. So right now, really, me and the policy committee take the liability. We're not we're not lawyers. We don't we don't search our stuff on Google. We're not everything's true. Um, we actually vet stuff out as much as we can through NFPA, through state law, through Florida statutes, all that kind of stuff. So they kind of do that for us, and they alert us when one of our policies is not in that mm -hmm. zone. So that's really the biggest plus plus the training aspect of it. And it's not just a training thing like you think of, like, oh, I gotta take a test. It's like a whole thing where they have to read it, they have to comprehend it, and then they have to test on it. And it's not like a huge test, it's just a couple questions, yeah. five or six questions for each vetted thing that they have to do. So it's a pretty cool program. And just to let you guys know, so you have some background, Chief and I didn't just make these decisions just because, we actually vetted these companies, we actually sat down, had teleconferences with each of them, we talked to other companies, I won't mention their names because they're they're not part of this talk, but we did talk to other programs, and this program 
was probably the most vetted and best one for our for Deltona and for many other places that use it. The reason why we started to go for the health app is because we had that extra fund that we got from canceling, which we thought was a smart move. Apparently some people don't think it is, but we thought it was a smart move. And we just wanted to try to use that money this year rather than next year. And they, they're very well big company or big known name, their, their owner is a big known name in public safety. They do a lot of free stuff uh, through Lexapol. So that's another reason why we elected to look at this company over some of the other ones because of their, their not only seniority in the in a, in a, um, long term uh, commitment to their public safety stuff, but because of what they offer. Does that answer your question? It, it does, thank you. How, how does this software package address cancer prevention and physical fitness? Well, the physical fitness is just, that's just a, a byproduct of it. It's through their videos. They have like videos, but they, what they do is they hire, they actually vet out people for specific programs, like they have stretching, they have yoga, they have all that kind of stuff, and it's just little short, uh, little short yeah. little video th things of physical fitness. That's really just a kind of a byproduct of, of the of the whole app. Just another part of the app. And the cancer prevention, how's that addressed? Uh, same same kind of thing. Okay. Little snippets, little advice. The uh, you've mentioned a couple times that you guys have vet this program against some other ones. Is there a reason why we're sole sourcing it or single sourcing it? Uh, and not going out for an RFP. With we're not. Like I don't. We're not sole sourcing. There is a sole source letter for it because they're the only ones who do that legal stuff that we talk. As far as we're talking about the policy program, not the not the wellness one. But it's through source well, not sole source. Source yes, well contracting. But we didn't go out for an RFP. We didn't look. That is through that the is procurement that policy. is correct through our current purchasing, we followed a current purchasing and because it's a source well contract, we're able to do that um, through purchasing. It's like a piggyback. It's basically like a piggyback. Uh, yeah, that's definitely, gonna, I definitely don't like that word. Mm -hmm. That's the, not the best practice well, that's, to that's, piggyback That's things. what our current practice is right now, and that's what <coughs> that way, but we did still, still look at the other products. We didn't just, we just didn't put it in the bid process. Yeah, I understand. Um, okay. Do you have any other questions, Mr. Harry? No, I don't. No any day public comments. Is there any motions? So there's no motions. Seeing that there's no motions, that this, Marsha, this dies for lack of a motion, correct? Yep. Okay. Sorry, Thank Chief. you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Mayor, if I would. Sure. I do. I do like the idea of of this software package. I'm not against supporting the fire department with these items. I just think that there needs to be a little bit more background information done. It needs to, you know. No. No, we're coming up to budget season. Let's work through it then. All right, we're gonna go ahead now and move to City, City Commission special reports and requests. Uh, we'll start with Commissioner, our newest Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Harriet. Special report. This is not uh, Commissioner comments here, obviously. Special special reports. Okay. Commissioner Shimpus. All right, thanks. Um, just a couple for tonight. Um, I would like uh, to get a consensus, I suppose, and ask that we have our city manager reach out to the uh, top two attorney firms that were uh, part of the last RFP and ask if they are still interested in to resubmit a, a current proposal, if they are still interested in, in working with the city of Daltona so that we can have that on the next available uh, commission meeting once we get the responses back to discuss those opportunities. Can, uh Go ahead and ask everyone here. Commissioner Marriott, would you give consensus? 
to go back to the, I think that we should discuss some other options before we uh, go out to okay. previous bidders. I, I think there, it warrants a discussion about bringing that in-house, uh, at least one FTE general counsel uh, in-house. Okay, uh, Commissioner McCool. Consensus, yes. Commissioner Crowell. All right, make sure your mic is on because I couldn't, I apologize. No. No. Vice Mayor Jody Lee. What, what was it you were talk, just talking about? Sorry. I didn't hear what Mike. I didn't hear what Commissioner Harriet was saying. Um, uh, instead of going back out to. So quick point of order. We're, let's, we'll get back to Commissioner Harriet. We're right now, we're getting consensus on Commission, or Commissioner Shimkus' uh, request. No. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I say yes. So, did you want to go back and have a special request, Commissioner Harriet? I'm trying to figure it out. That's what it is. It's okay, but we have we have a motion. We had a, a request for consensus currently on on the table. I just didn't want to. I didn't want to deviate from that. So uh, I'm aware. That's why I voiced my uh, concerns. Ad additional options. Okay. Commissioner Shimkus, do you have any more? Uh, I think that could be part of that conversation, but um, yeah. Okay. I think we need to have the conversation. Sure. I just think there's other options. Okay. So there is no consensus right now. Right. Did you have any other special requests? Um, just that we would uh, schedule a workshop uh, as kind of between now and when um, that we are going to, be doing, going to be doing our city manager search to have a workshop with the commission to understand what our process is going to be and to, and to just get really clear on how we're going to interview those candidates, what we're looking for, set some goals, just you know, that kind of nature. So I want to make sure we do a workshop on that and then perhaps in that workshop we could, we could also address uh, you know, an, an attorney process at the same time. But I want that workshop for at least the city manager piece to happen before we begin um, getting the list of vetted applicants from our from our committee. So I think we have time between now and when that happens. Commissioner Harriet, do you give consensus on that request? Yes. Commissioner Colwell? Yes. Commissioner McCool? Yes. Vice Mayor Jody Lee? Yes. I vote yes as well. So you have consensus, city manager. And that's it. Commissioner McCool, any special reports or requests? Yes, I do. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Sure. Um, first of all, I would like to report back on our TPO meeting here. Um, we have several projects that are underway um, at TPO. Um, and most importantly, I wanted to let you know, and because it will be brought up again, and I just want to make sure as your representative you understand this, the call for projects for TPO has now passed. As you know, Deltona elected not to um, do any projects under TPO as we're trying to close out projects that are currently undergoing. Uh, and we just wanted to make sure that we were focused, hyper-focused on those, especially with the incoming city manager. Um, so I wanted to let you know about that. We had procedural um, things that we did this um, session, um, none directly affecting Deltona. I know that we do have some long range projects on there still up on our project list, the Rhode Island Avenue extension, um, Saxon Boulevard from I-4 to Normandy, 472 Grange to Kentucky to MLK. And we will be, be and that's a long range plan that we'll be working on, so I'll keep you up to date on those. Um, if you would like the minutes from any TPO meeting, please let me know, and I would be more than happy to drop those in your box for you uh, as we move through. It was kind of direct and, and a rather short meeting this time, so um, under my special reports and requests, I am requesting, and I have been asking about this for quite a while, um, a, an update on our security cameras. Um, because, as you know, we just had two break-ins 
at um, two of the parks. I apologize for that background noise. At two parks um, where stuff was smashed and grabbed, and it has been one of my sore spots. When crimes are being committed, such as vandalism, and I've asked how much vandalism has been uh, reported, how do we recover that money? Well, that's through good detective work, and how do we have good detective work? That's through cameras working. And I would like and need for us to discuss under special reports and requests how those allocations are budgeted um, in the process, because we need some serious updating um, and need to discuss how those are going to be budgeted. I don't think all the onus should be put on the parks as we are protecting the whole city. Um, so I just wanted to bring that out. Um, and my third request and last request, well, I'm sorry, I have two. Um, yes, I'm going to bring it up, and it's sad. Deltona Wrestling Team is in need of financial support for um, mats and for um for equipment that they have. Yes, it's a school, and it's sad that the Board of Education um, is not able to answer the call <laughs> or the schools or however fundraising. At the end of the day, however, we have kids that need equipment, and I'm not going to single them out. But I'm going to ask again that we try to, I guess, privately finance that. Because I heard constituents' concerns with us giving money to schools because if they come, they all come, which I'm not opposed to if every school steps up and uh, defines the deficiency and the lack of funding for things that they have going on. So um, I will put that call out to the commission, whatever is on your heart, to give to the wrestling team. I will not ask the commission for consensus on uh, giving money. You say you and the last thing I will say for my comments. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Colwell? Uh, no. McCool already asked my question about the cameras, so we can get an update on what's going on with those at the parks. <laughs> oh, okay. We're going to go back before we go to you, Vice Mayor. Are you okay if we go to Commissioner Harriet? Sure. Go ahead, Commissioner. No, thank you, Mayor. So, um, for requests, uh, today is the kickoff of Flood Awareness Week. There's not a big to do about that, but we're also less than 60 days out from hurricane season. Uh, that all being said, uh, I believe that one of our prior city managers, interim city managers, some of the like, uh, expressed that we had some procedural issues or concerns that prevented us from seeking or maximizing uh, FEMA reimbursement during Hurricane Ian. Uh, so I'd like to ask uh, the city manager, the commission, if we could get to consensus to ask the city manager if he could uh, put together kind of a, a plan to address those those issues in the past and um, find out what's being done so that we don't we don't have those issues moving forward uh, this coming hurricane season. If you listen to anybody's prediction, it's supposed to be the worst. Uh, so. Um, if we can just get ahead of that. We haven't done it yet, and uh, 60 days out isn't necessarily the ideal time to do it, but it's better than after the storm. So that's all I have. Okay. Can we get quick consensus on that, Commissioner Shimkus? Sure. Commissioner McCool? Sure. Vice Mayor Jody Lee? Yes. And I say yes, so you have consensus, City Manager? All right, Vice Mayor. Uh, one of my requests, I asked city manager, I asked a couple of weeks ago about that Tyler Technologies. I have yet to get her answer. It's been a couple of weeks. I'm wondering if you could know if they got paid or not. No, they haven't been paid anything. I did send out an email this afternoon with explanation of the, you know, of the project itself. Was there just somebody from Tyler Technologies here last week? I think so. I, I, well, I, yeah, I, I thought you had a meeting with him with finance. No, we were talking about the RFP for the time and attendance. With Tyler Technologies, all right? No. They weren't No, they were not that. here. Okay. Not for that. So uh, my other request is we get that RFP out for payroll as soon as possible. 
because that keeps on seeing to take. I mean, we just had a report that is nine hundred thousand dollars a year that our payroll is getting over on, and we just keep on pushing things off and off and off. And you know, it's almost been. A, I think we brought it up a year ago, and nothing ever takes place. Uh, that's 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 one of them. I'm still working on wondering where we're going to do the future land use codes and everything else. We got storm season coming up. Everybody keeps asking about the future land use codes. The I mean, all, every every aspect of it, we just. We're doing a workshop. We're doing a workshop. We, we've had enough time to go over this stuff 10 times already, and it has not been brought back to us not one time to discuss. Can we get some of these heavy items on there to do? Tonight, if you look at this agenda, I'm sorry, no offense to anybody, there's nothing on here that's going to matter to somebody when it starts raining. When somebody wants, we got all these big developments coming up. We've got 300 houses here, 250 houses over. I mean, and we're not doing nothing to address all these situations. I mean, we're taking each thing one at a time. We need to go over our the comprehensive plan, future land use codes, all of this stuff, and we don't, we're not going nowhere. We're not having no big projects on these agendas, the last couple agendas. We, uh, we're, we've been waiting for a workshop on the future land use codes. I think, Mayor, I think you brought it up six months ago. We all brought it up. We're getting nowhere. So can we start putting some things of importance? I understand there's certain things on here that some people think it's important. You know, putting somebody on the TPO, a consent item for this, a, a, a truck for this department. We need some meat and potatoes that's going to help people with the flooding issues in the storm season, some roads that need to be fixed, some storm waters that need to be addressed. This is what we need as, as the people that live in the city. So I, I would hope we can get some of this moving forward sooner than later. That's it. All right. <clears throat> I got a couple myself, a uh, special request. Can we put a list, uh, City Manager, You obviously you can meet with each and every one of us every one of us individually. Could we put a list um, within the next 14 days, if possible, of priorities that each of us commissioners have uh, as far as for a workshop? Um, and then within 30 days of that, have a scheduled uh, a schedule of workshops ready to go so we at least know when these workshops will happen. I'll give you an example. We just, talk, we just spoke about it, the uh, um, land use codes. Right, stuff like that, things that are a priority to us. Uh, having a, a plan together in case there's a flood, right? We hear meteorologists all the time, oh, it's gonna rain five inches. Well, let's have a plan together so we can you know, open the weir, drain how many every inches we need, because we know that takes a couple of days to happen, and then you know, we're prepared for whatever storm we get. So can you get with each and every commissioner? I don't know if I need consensus for that, but to get there at least top five priorities so we can work that into a workshop? Yes. Within the next 14 days and then schedule, have a schedule. I'm not saying that the schedule needs to be within 30 days, but within 30 days, 15 days after the 15 days, if it makes sense, have a schedule of workshops ready to go so that at least we know when we're going to be talking about each and every one of these subjects. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. I, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but no, no, no. Well, can we get more than one thing on the agenda for a workshop? No, no, no. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's all we've been getting sure. is one item, I, and we're not getting nowhere. We, this, is, this is my whole frustration. Listen, we've been – how long did we stay here last time when it came to the fences? <laughs> I don't mind doing two or three things, and we're – I mean, I got two little girls to see, but, Do it on a Saturday. you know, we – it's, it's important. Um, if we can do that, we get two items. If it's going to take us a long time, I have no issue. I think the land use codes is probably something that needs to be on its own. Uh, so that, that's one of my, my requests. And I'm giving you timeline so there is no excuse that, you know, it keeps getting put off to the side. Sorry, second request. It's going to come up, so I'm just going to ask for this. There is a commission policy and procedure that you guys, or that Mr. Chisholm and Joyce put together. If we're going to work on this, I have no issue working on this, but let it be the commissions, right? Let's have a workshop on the proclamations and the key to the city stuff and birthday cards and certificates because that's very important as well. But let it be the commission. I don't want anything that Mr. Chisholm touched and decided to leave at the last minute be anything that we need to talk about. 
So that's that. And I'm going to ask for consensus from the dais because we're going to restrict the mayor. But let's do it out in the open in a workshop where residents can come have their two minutes. And if it's a bashing fest for the mayor, great. I'm a big boy. I, 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 I'll take it. But each commissioner, especially the new ones that are here, should have a say in that. So can I get consensus? Commissioner Harriet? Yes. Commissioner Chimkus? Commissioner McCool? Commissioner Cole, Vice Mayor Jody Lee. I haven't read it, but yes. <laughs> and I say yes. I say yes. So that's that. And hopefully that'll bring some some more camaraderie between the, the commission up here, all right? Uh, that is, oh, the last special request I do have is, it's probably more of a question. Are we still answering the residents that come to that podium? Are we still following up? Because I got consensus on that last time. I just want to make sure that I'm also getting a copy to the responses that they're getting. Yes, we're working on responses continuously, actually. Thank you so much. Those, those are my only requests. We're going to go ahead and move to city attorney comments. City manager, Chisholm. Yes, I only have one. Um, um, I'm looking for, I, I had a, we had an email for our, from the West Volusia Hospital Authority wanting to come in and do a um, presentation on their health care, our health card program. Just need to see if you guys are interested in that or not. Sure. I mean, we can go down the line. Would you be willing to let them do a presentation, Commissioner Harriet? It, whatever you want, that's your consensus, whatever you want. Are there more pressing needs? Okay. Commissioner Chimkus. Commissioner McCool? I think we might have been disconnected or she's muted. Yes. Okay. Commissioner Colwell? Yes. Vice Mayor Jody Lee? Yes. And I vote yes. That's all I have, Mayor. Okay. We're going to go to City Commission comments. We'll start with Commissioner Harriet. I'll be short. Um, I appreciate the warm welcome from everybody. Thank you, guys. Commissioner Shimkus. Have a good night. <laughs> Commissioner McCool. Yes, my only comment is that I would like to see our um, clerks um, get some help. I will tell you there has been a huge amount. I would ask the commissioners to look into it, a huge amount of frivolous public requests, which are backlogging us to actual public records requests. So it's just an informal ask that you stop down and talk to your clerk's office regarding that and understand what they're doing and going through right now. Um, and that's my only formal ask. Thank you all for bearing with me this evening. Thank you so much. Commissioner Cowell. Uh, I have nothing. Vice Mayor Jody Lee? Oh, you know I do. <laughs> Mine's going to be easy. My, my, just my comments are that uh, we got the HR person in place. Uh, we have a lot of different openings in the city. I hope, Mr. City Manager, you can work with this same agency if we have to to get some other place of people filled in certain positions because I know there's a lot of openings. And if it worked for an HR person, and I don't know if anybody's had interaction with her. She's, she, she it, it, it's it turned out to be pretty good. And I, I don't like everything she tells me, but that's, that's the kind of history I have anyway. But I, I, everything's been going okay. Things are falling into place. We just have a lot of stuff that needs to be taken care of. Things that have been brought up, you know, like all these. Uh, workshops and things. We just need to get more stuff done that is a concern and not you know, like chicken ordinances or a dog or something. We need more stuff that's going to affect people in the long run. I understand animals affects people, but there's a lot of pressing needs with storms and floods coming and roads. And we have developments that are they're just, I've been looking at them. Some are way out there in left field. I mean, there's places that are rural areas, and all of a sudden you want to stick 400 houses in a spot. It's just, if we don't start paying attention, we're going to wreck our own way of life here. And it's, it's right around the corner. I mean, there's people that live right, you know, right down the street from here. And, and I hate to say a lot of it's going to be in, down in my, my district. 
it, it's going to wreck a lot of people's way of life. It's going to wreck people at our schools because the schools are going to be starting to be overcrowded. Our roads are getting taken a beating. Now, if, if we can work get good with the county to have our roads fixed, and the roads that they own, we can work on our own roads. But yeah, when it rains hard enough, Howland Boulevard's coming apart like like it got built by a bunch of teenagers. I'm sorry, it's just it falls apart as soon as it rains. You got roads over in Europe they built, you know, 2,000 years ago. They're still driving around. We can't even get one at last five years. So I, I hope we can get all this stuff going pretty soon, so we can fix the issues we got. We have a lot of stormwater infrastructure. People want to come here, but we need to do stuff smart. And if, if we can't all come together and get to working on these subjects, we're just we're going to get left behind the power curve. We're, all these developers are going to come in and take over, and we're all it's going to ruin every bit of a person's life here. And I, personally, I don't want to see it happen in my neighborhood. You know, I, I can only argue for so much, but we're not doing nothing to stop people from coming and destroying our city. We want it to grow, but we have to do it the smart way. And the way we're starting to do it isn't the smart way. That's all. So I just have a couple of things. The mayor's fitness challenge, uh, we just finished our first week. Um, we had a, a lot of people come sign up. Uh, not as many that participate, but that always kind of tends to happen. Come out, it's a good, healthy lifestyle. It's a lot of fun. Uh, the military theme, it, this, this week is gonna start getting tough and I'm speaking for myself, right? Uh, but it's fun, it's, it's, we actually don't even talk about politics, we talk about health, we talk about family. Come out, this is what building community is about. We leave all that other garbage outside and we just go and have fun. We, they poke fun at the mayor because he hasn't lost too much weight in the first week, which is cool. Um, March 23rd, egg extravaganza. Um, you know, again, another community building event. Uh, April 13th through June 1st, you have the Youth Basketball League. Um, so go and sign up for that. There's so there's so many good things that the city actually has. I know we tend to focus on, on a lot of the bad stuff because we need to fix it, but there is a lot of positive that the city does have. Um, that being said, I want to give an official warm work welcome. First, I'll, I'll do it to Troy because I don't think last time I did it during my commissioner comments, so welcome again. Uh, we're happy to have you. Uh, commissioner Harriet, welcome. We're happy to have you as well. So um, hopefully we can, uh, uh, Vice Mayor Jody Lee, hopefully we can put our shenanigans aside and, and try to work together. I've been smiling, ain't I? Yeah. I've been smiling. I mean, we can, you know. Anyways, I want to I want to tell everybody. Look, focus on your family. Let's work on building together this city and making it a better place. I am so looking forward to these workshops. I really am looking forward to these workshops and the priority, because the last thing I want to see is more of my residents flooded. The last thing I'll say is to all the commissioners up here, there are developments that are coming in every day, right? We some of them we can't stop it. It's it's their private uh, private property rights. Some of them we could stop it because they have to come and get permission. Obviously, they don't have a right to do anything if they're asking for permission. There are things that we can do, and and Phyllis is a great example of that because you have places like Cortland Park, uh, the other uh, place that's right next to it. I believe Catalina Point or Osprey. Yeah. There's things that they're they're not doing right. There's nothing wrong with, with having meetings with your constituents and, and saying, okay, what, what are the problems you're seeing? Sit down, talk to your residents, and you'll see that you guys can come up with a list. Ms. Wallace is a, not trying to be all, you know, praising you, because I don't want you to get too much of a big head, but you've been very great at that. We put together a couple people, they came together, they gave you a list. That helps our residents know that the city is working for them. That gives them peace of mind. So if we can do that together as a commission, as a whole, hey, I'm gonna concentrate on my district. If you need help and it overlaps, obviously, you know, we can't talk outside of the sunshine, but listen, I, I go out there and help too. I, I don't care what district it is. We, we all live here and we want Daltona to be a better place. That being said, enjoy your family. Have a great week. We are adjourned.